This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 803, for the week of Monday, January 29th, 2024. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. My name is Steve. And my name is Alex. And this week on the podcast, we have a very special guest. He is the translator for One Piece and Weekly Shonen Jump and Manga Plus, Stephen Paul. How's it going, Stephen? Hey. Going pretty good. Good. Weather is okay in California? Yeah, no, it's... It's really nice. We were we got flooded last week. Actually, it, it set the record. We had no, we had never had a one day rainfall amount as high. So it, so it set oh, yeah, off I heard all about the, that. yeah, it set off all of the like uh, you know the insurance like one percent once in a century type of uh, mm. of stuff. So uh, actually, some people I knew got like their um, you know their like uh, storage units flooded and stuff like that. Is kind of kind of a bummer. Yeah. But today it's like seventy degrees, so I can't complain. No, you can't. You're not allowed. Um... We also have uh, joining us our contributor Jill Knight. Hello. Yes, I will uh, co- uh, you know cooperate with Stephen says. It is lovely out today here in California. <laughs> okay, I'm glad we're getting our California weather check. Everyone was concerned. Um, I'm the one who asked, so I don't know why I can't really be sarcastic. <laughs> and last but not least, you may know him as Mother's Basement on YouTube. We have Jeff Thru joining us again. How's it going, Jeff? It's going good, uh, and I'm happy to report that the weather is also nice in Edmonton by Edmonton standards, by which I mean there's only like two feet of snow melt outside my house <laughs> right now. As if you're not like the negative by like a decent chunk, because I know it was crazy the last few weeks. Yeah, um, I mean, it's actually five Celsius right now, which is like great. Uh, it hit like negative 30 for a yeah. while. Um, which was, you know, bad if you're outside, but I was playing Cyberpunk 2077, so that meant I could just open the window, crank the settings up, didn't wow. have to worry about overheating. It's great. It's true. I know negative 30 is like where Fahrenheit and Celsius get close to being the same. Yeah, I was going to say uh, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, I mean, it's, it's 30 degrees below the freezing point of water. To, yeah. to give you yeah, a, yeah. Mm-hmm. so 30 degrees colder than your freezer that's why it's overkill don't set your freezer to negative 30 perfect perfect game do game not <laughs> um, uh, yeah Jeff, yeah we, i i had ice inside my windows it was <laughs> oof. i i think this happened once to me but gee, in chicago i know that happens half of um, this podcast can no longer relate to that <laughs> <laughs> i don't like that i'm part of the half that can relate um Jeff, welcome back. We were talking about monsters a little bit before we were starting, and, you know, content. I have to record whenever we're talking about One Piece related. It's uh, necessary. Uh, What You you said you saw it. What Did you have thoughts? Well, I read it. Oh, you read it. And I I watched, like, five minutes of it, and I was like, I don't like this story enough to watch it twice in one day. (laughs) Um, So I stopped. Uh, It's, you know, it's, it's, it's one of Oda's early... Uh, one shots, right? It was not mm-hmm. originally part of One Piece canon, and I don't think it even really makes sense in One Piece canon. Does like not. The, the we've never heard about dragons before, and I mean, I mean, it, I mean, we've heard about dragons, but not in that context. So unless Ryuma is way older than he's supposed to be, there's, there's, there's you know, it just doesn't make sense canon wise. But like as a story. You know, it's neat. It's neat to know that that Oda was referencing that when he when he did Thriller Bark. That's like a neat little bit of trivia that's in my brain now. Uh, but you know, you can tell he wrote it before. Uh, was it the Wild West version of One Piece Wanted? Yeah, the, yeah. there was a Wanted. Mm-hmm. There's a Wanted short in there too, right? I they they've not been published in English. Uh, would have written this a, when, he series, was, uh, when he was when he was a 20. collection of yeah. of one shots. It's not just a Wild West. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. but yes, the story wanted is the Wild West. Uh, That's what. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it it like you know, you can tell it was when Odo was still like getting his bearings and still dealing with jump projections um, mm. for for yeah. long term series. But it's a really cool, I think, slice of his sort of evolution as an artist so i i Mm -hmm. i I think it's neat in that way but like you know i wouldn't say go out and read it like a fujimoto one shot or something like that Mm -hmm. he was like 17 right when he made or it must have been Uh, less even because it's like 20 
It was 22 yeah. when uh, serialization I, began. I oh, okay. believe I believe this one shot was from 94. Um, 19. Was, which right. was the one that won that award? The uh, the Atska, uh is, is, oh. Isn't that what it was called? The I yeah. It was the one Atska of these, award. I think. Yeah. Um, I I do not remember. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, I do I do agree that kind of like tr- trying to play up the uh, the so called connections of this and the uh, the canon One Piece material is is sort of like just picking out a random like old extended universe Star Wars book and like t- just grabbing a random character and being like, all right, yep. you're in the new Mandalorian, like check it out, isn't this cool? And you're <laughs> like, this is a really odd connection to make, but uh, Stephen, uh, you must write for the Mandalorian. <laughs> uh, yeah, how'd you know? Yeah. Um, I hunch. I agree. I think the way to look at it is just that he drew from something that he did, and it was supposed to be a cool connection for people who were readers of, of right. his early one shots, which were, which even though they're not available here or like super everywhere in in Japan, I remember just like Wanted was next to all of the One Piece stuff. Like mm-hmm. that was so it might have been more on people's brains there, um, but yeah, yeah, it doesn't it, fit. <laughs> some of the uh, some of the other things are kind of interesting so people might have noticed um that like you know they they say at the end i'm if you haven't read it you can go read it on um on the visa i don't know if they actually put it up on manga plus so there's probably some countries that are kind of left out at the moment um but uh yeah that so like you know at the end they kind of reveal like oh like his his name is like ryuma de king Right. Um, and it's not, it's not the letter D it's, it's D E and that's sort of like a French styling. So it's kind of circumstantial, but like a lot of the, um, the creative aspects of it are the trappings of it are French in style. So like, for example, I don't know why, cause I, you know, they, they sort of coordinated this stuff after I translated it. Um, uh, basically, you know, I found out several weeks ago, it's like, all right, we're going to do, you know, the, the monster's story. Um, so go ahead and translate that. And, um, I didn't have any, you know, there was no, like, here's the style sheet. Here's what you should do. Um, so basically I just, you know, worked on it based on however I felt this, the characters should be named or, or spelled and then handed it in. And then after that point, you know, they, I assume they got together with the anime team that was working on it and are like, all right, this is what the names are going to be actually. And so like the bad guy being named Shirano, it's S H I R A N O. Um, it was originally Cyrano, like C Y R A N O, like Cyrano de Bergerac, um, uh, because you know mm. he's like he's like the dandy with the mustache and the you know the fancy um, the mustache is definitely that orange. makes more sense. I was I was a little yeah. confused by that. Me too. Um, right, and that... so and so the the da Ruma, Ruma da King is sort of like you know Tour de France. It's it's of in uh, in English and and stuff, and so it's kind of interesting to be like, all right, was that. Did that have any part to play in like Oda deciding, hey, that that D, you know, or the duh, or the, like you know, the little middle initial thing is kind of interesting. Maybe I can use that in uh, in One Piece in some way. Um, and and then you looking back, you're like, well, should it just be a D? I don't know. Does that get weird in the canonical story? Uh, like, is he supposed to be a D or not, or or what? So. I don't know. It's one of those things that's kind of like the details don't necessarily line up, but it is kind of interesting to speculate on, you know, the creative process behind it. Yeah. It's interesting also to, to hear about like the, the work that goes into like localizing that and trying not to mess with the lore just to be Mm -hmm. safe. Um, Yeah. And, and, you know, I, like I said, I didn't know, like, I, I just heard basically like a, you know, a little while before it's like, oh yeah, we're going to change this guy's, you know, they, they want to call him Shirano with an SHI and, you know, all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. That's kind of weird, but whatever. It's not my call anymore. Like I just turned it in. That's all that matters. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Somebody made that decision, obviously. I'll say this also includes, I think I forget. I remember Greg talking the wanted includes the romance dawn where like Garp is the is very present. Um I remember yeah. that for two of the one shots he purposely didn't have either Shanks or Garp involved uh in right. order to save it for the serialization. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if this was the one, but it also just makes me think a, a lot of this book One Piece had always been his like the thing that he wanted to do. Right. Um, or Romance Dawn, as it's called here. 
Um, and I, I, I feel like you could feel in this story, like, this is just a fun other thing I'm doing. Like, it does feel like that. Uh, where he didn't obviously put quite as much, uh, I mean, for Oda, like for a normal person, a ton of thought, but for Oda, it didn't feel like quite the level that he's usually at story-wise. Um, but, yeah, there's like an implication of a world beyond yeah. what's in the comic, but like nothing specific to any, you know, we we hear about one other city that used to be there until the dragon destroyed it, but yeah. Yeah, it doesn't feel like mm-hmm. Oda's level of planning out the world around yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. and, and it can, can't. You, you know, the... it can't because yeah. that—that's how the one shots work. Is like you have to cut every last little bit of excess until it's you know every detail is crucial to the story. That's you know just kind of general. It didn't short feel story writing. It didn't feel rushed. It felt slow, um, which isn't bad necessarily. <laughs> yeah. necessarily. I, I haven't seen the anime, but the manga, you know, it felt fine. It did not feel rushed. Um, it's perfectly entertaining. I But, like, again, I, I don't know if it's something I'd rush out to read, but I'm really appreciative that it does exist. Um, mm-hmm. Because it should, every, I feel like most other countries have had this translated by this point. Um, yeah. But... Anyway, any other monsters thoughts? Otherwise, we'll go into um, we'll go into the manga in a sec. Um, I want to remind people they could subscribe to us on patreon.com slash one piece podcast. We have uh, episodes ad free on there. Uh, we have alternate images by Steve and the, the other folks who may be doing our episode images this week, uh, alternate titles and um a lot of other hopefully a lot of other cool stuff to celebrate our 15th anniversary this year um with that out of the way let's get into manga chapter 1105 this is the manga recap for chapter 1105 the height of folly you could read this chapter and all chapters of One Piece as soon as they come out for free, legally, worldwide, at shonenjump.viz.com or mangaplus.shueisha.co.jp. Ed, I'm remiss to say we don't have Sam on this week to describe this week's cover, uh, our resident carrot Stan, or whatever. Um, yeah, that's, that, it sounds right. Yeah, that sounds right. Ed, what's going on in the cover? It's a reader request for carrot cooking a stew and preferably taste testing it. And preferably, he's giving notes here mm-hmm. uh, by Odomania's brother. <laughs> so not even uh, Odomania, you know, a true fanatic. Yeah. He's just the brother. <laughs> uh, Disappointing. You know. Yeah. Well, he, he got chosen, and uh, yeah, Cat Viper and Dog Storm are very. Uh, you know, they're they're just salivating over the stew, completely ignoring the uh, um, what carrots wearing. This is clearly a <laughs> reference to last week's podcast episode with the super stew question. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, just, just as a reminder, soup. <laughs> this is the future leader of the Minx here. Uh, yeah, I think that's what. It, yeah. I think that's what. By the way, I have to say, last week's cover page uh, infinitely better, in my opinion, uh, in that it elicited a Cinderella three discussion. But I'm that's sure we true. could figure out. <laughs> I'm sure we could figure out something here to get off topic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if there's much to say unless anyone has a thought on this cover yeah, page it's it's you know it's it's a cute one um yeah yeah it's good yeah there's yeah. carrots with a sword in it yeah that's yeah that's how you odd. chop them right you stab the sword right in there no yeah you just mm-hmm. you just leave yeah. it not how you eat your carrots you just stab them and like eat them like a pirate i guess let's put my knife somewhere where i can remember where i put it yeah in my carrot <laughs> I'll I'll say this is the first manga recap where we have had more people than pages. Um, so I will abstain and instead just ruin everyone else's pages. I'm sorry, I mean not ruin everyone else's pages. Uh, let's start. Ed, go for it. Okay, so back on Egghead, the Buster Call the, has been called again, and people are screaming and running for their lives, all the Marines. Here, all the, the sirens going off in the background. 
We hear all ships prepare to fire. All sailors leave the island. Retreat to your ships. And uh, they're running for their ships. We hear the, keep, keep hearing the uh, the sirens throughout this whole thing. And uh, some Navy grunts are like, what's happening in the center? No idea. Just follow orders. But, um, oh, shit. What's the, what's her name again? Doll. Doll? Doll. Doll. So, yeah, Vero. Doll. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, it comes up to uh, St. Saturn and Admiral Borsellino and uh, tells them to hurry up to the ship. But uh, Saturn informs her that uh, Kizaru and I will remain on the island. Begin the bombardment when the ships are ready. Uh, She's surprised by that, huh? But, uh, go, Kizaru says. And just shocked, she says, uh, yes, sir. And we get back to the scene with Vegapunk addressing Saturn. And... uh, Vegapunk, with uh, a very serious look in his eyes, says, I thought my life was the only thing you wanted, St. Saturn. Again, it's packed with the fruits of the latest research in every conceivable field. Destroy it, and you'll set the state of scientific progress back a hundred years. Call off the pasta call. Please, Kizaru. He set uh, back. Kizaru. Is, we know is he Kizaru set back Gil- the, the yeah. course of history 900 years the first time, so what's another yeah. hundred? We really get uh, get the pain in Kizaru's eyes. He can't uh, he can't look anybody in the eye. He's just looking sort of at the ground, kind of. Or maybe he's just very tall and pick up on the short. What is what is he doing <laughs> with his lips there? He's doing little. Ooh, I'm That's Kizaru's <laughs> lips don't know how to yeah. just sit in place and That's do just, yeah. That is kind of do. how they are normally. Yeah. Just just like Vegapunk's tongue isn't able to get inside of his mouth. Uh, mm-hmm. Everyone has their issues, you know. Uh, but Saturn, sensing something is going on here, he says, uh, Are you still hiding something? Perhaps something troublesome to the world government? We do not need progress. And I guess this is, uh, Vegapunk looks down towards the ground and he says, It's for the sake of humanity! And, uh, yeah, go to the next page. The, the Kizaru Go panel, by the way, that feels like something out of a different series or like a... Like a like a drama series on ABC mm-hmm. or something. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Go, uh, Steve. Cool. There it is. All right. And then uh, Saturn here says, uh, "Oh yeah, <laughs> I did forget to mention that I've ordered a strike against the ship that escaped this island yesterday." Wah! As Vegapunk uh, <laughs> responds in terror. Uh, and Saturn says, after all, it's possible that someone on board knew something about the Void Century. I sent battleships after it to ensure there will be no survivors. Uh, Vegapunk says, how could you do such a thing? They know nothing. They've committed no crimes. Uh, and Saturn says, you caused this to happen to them, Vegapunk. You broke the law. Just as they did at Ohara. You could not overcome your lust for knowledge, and so you had to go you had to go digging up the past and Vega Punk is kind of like angry because it's like oh you kind of got me there but still you're terrible is this the first time we're hearing about this like, about the ship with- yeah yes. I, yeah. yeah I was gonna when I was they, reading it initially I'm like this is randomly put in here um mm-hmm. I I think like before when the um when it was just Cypherpole that had arrived um, they sent away a bunch of the workers. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's okay. So I think that's the ship they're talking about. Okay. Yeah. God. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people yeah. have been <laughs> ship positing... or ships. It's not yeah. clear. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't. He doesn't show us if it's singular or plural. But you get the idea. He. A lot of people have been implying the black that it's Blackbeard's ship. I don't think that mm. makes any sense with what Vegapunk says. I um, agree. Yeah, I think Blackbeard. The Blackbeard pirates are there. They're just not who I, yeah, we're talking I, about. This is we're adding another. Oh yeah, we're no, adding another. Let's add another to the one. Soup here. Yeah, it's yeah, a this, stew. Th- it's this a ship stew. is the one that he's talking about. Here is the one that has the egghead staff on board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and but I I also wonder. This is obviously supposed to have a lot of gravitas, especially when we get to the end, and we'll talk about more then. But I, like, wonder if it's just a bunch of random workers that doesn't feel like it has has enough gravitas to to us as readers. 
Um, but well, it's we'll uh, reflecting O'Hara. They blew up the ship mm-hmm. of refugees who yeah. are trying to leave. So they're I just mean, showing it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if they're they're innocent. They're just going to blow them up. Yeah. No, I yeah. I get that. I mean more that the end, the big cliffhanger, mm-hmm. not to spoil for people who are listening and not reading the chapter for some reason. Um, but it just, I you know, whatever. We can move but on. It, 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 so I... Yeah, yeah, we'll get to the that. We'll get to the I end. Yeah, think, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, I I have a theory about who they are, and I think it's separate from the ship that left. Oh, um, it's one of those things. I hate when I hate when they're talking about something that's completely different than anyway. Yeah, it looks like uh, Vegapunk's wearing his uh, SGS shirt. That's cool. <laughs> Perfect. He he. We should be selling those. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was just that was something so. Yeah, it's no surprising that I forgot about that. I don't know if yeah. it's been mentioned at all recently, nope. but nope. Uh, just one thing that threw me off. Anyway, uh, so we got an announcement here. It says pacifistas are in standby mode on the island. All other sailors get to the ships. Ship fifty four, all green. Ship twenty one. Yeah, they're just, uh, you know, just all lining up here. Uh, and we see uh, Sanji, Frankie, Bonnie, um, Atlas, and Kuma. Uh, they've gotten away. Uh, or they ran away. <laughs> and Sanji's saying, hurry, get in the vacuum rocket. Uh, while Vegapunk is distracting those guys. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, I think this is probably Frankie or, you know, just the rest of them just saying, oh, we'll meet you at the back entrance of the Labo phase. And Sanji uh, rogers that and... Bonnie calls out to Sanji says, uh, what about Vegapunk? And Sanji with a classic uh, turn and smile, or confident or assuring smile, but with a bonus thumbs up, says, don't worry, Bonnie, I'll bring him back. Uh, and as he runs, he uh, phones in Nami. And I just like how Sanji just just says, this is me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, that's totally an Oda thing too. I think he's had yeah. Chopper do that before, where like you know he's just like instead of identifying yourself, it just says, "Hey, this is me," uh, which you know is funny in text. Ken is me. Uh, uh, and he's asking for the situation, and we hear from Nami, uh, who says, uh, "We're already at the back door. Uh, what's with all the noise down there?" <clears throat> all right. Well, uh, here we are at the top of the um, of. Egghead, aka the Labo phase. Um, oh wait, were the the sound effects not completely erased here? I just noticed that. Oh yeah, I just noticed <laughs> that oh, too. Shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow, Oof. it's like wow, that's not that's my messy. fault. Tweet, <laughs> tweet, tweet, tweet. Yeah, it's a really annoying alarm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, now we know what in two languages, so that's good. Yeah. So it turns out that everybody is kind of freaking out. Um, everybody up top uh, is freaking out that there's a buster call and that everybody being Nami, Usopp, Chopper, Robin, and Edison. Uh, uh, we hear a buster call. Um, this island's done for. Uh, this is the rear entrance, by the way, the back door that Nami had, had mentioned. Uh, Nami, who we haven't seen in a very long time. Um, a, lot of, a lot of these people we haven't seen in a very long time. Uh, it's been a lot of panel, breaks. Got, <laughs> yeah. It's got our friends. Uh, Usopp's freaking out. Chopper's taking care of Robin. Edison's freaking out. And, and Nami's on correspondence with Sanji. And uh, this is slightly hard to follow, so I'm going to uh, do this as best I can. Good luck. Um, all right. So the conversation with, with Nami and Sanji goes as thus. Uh, Nami says, what about Luffy? He's with you, uh, right? And Sanji says, not in my light of sight at the moment, but he's fine. Just focus on yourselves. Um Nami lets everybody uh, lets Sanji know that uh, Zoro is still being held up by Luchi, so Jinbei went to put a stop to that uh, and to keep him from getting lost. <laughs> um, I do like the idea that like uh, Jinbei is just so powerful that he's just like, oh, I'm just, it's a cat. <laughs> I have water powers. To be fair, <laughs> fish ain't water. Fish usually fear cats, so I think he's against type here. Yeah, he's a very Large it's fish. a very large. He's yeah. the largest of fish, to be fair. Frizz is a very large cat, so I mean, you yeah, know, it's true. I mean, and, and like Jimbei is, he, he was a warlord, right? So he's probably like that. You know, 
Zoro's on Lucci's level now. That was one of my favorite moments when that fight started, where Lu- Lucci yeah. was like, okay, I'm going to fight Luffy again. And Zoro's just like, bitch, you think you... <laughs> you thought... <laughs> he said bitch. That but was two years ago. <laughs> yeah. That was, that, was, that was two years. We did this fight already. <laughs> this is our fight now. Yeah, we, we read volume 45 or 44, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think Jimbe just like... They they clear him together easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, yeah. I was trying to remember Jinbei where Jinbei also hasn't gotten you injured ahead. yet or any fights, so he's he's yeah he's good to go. I, I, I didn't realize where he was, I didn't realize that this scene was like I, I guess considered like Zoro slander or something because <laughs> because I woke up this morning with like some you know Twitter notifications of like how could you do this at Translatosaurus. Uh, you know, <laughs> because apparently the the Zoro stands were um, were mad about something. So I I don't know. Oh, the Zoro stands are the power scalers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the uh, by the way, uh, <laughs> yeah. If anybody is new to the podcast, I do not care for people who take power scaling seriously. Um, anyways, <laughs> you're so uh, box. <laughs> I I I'm box. Is that is that like based? Is that a thing that I don't? So so no, you're on a soapbox. I like, said oh. soapbox. <laughs> yeah. But oh, you're based oh, too, I thought Alex. you said it's okay. Oh, great! Yeah. Uh, I love that. No, I thought you said I'm so boxed. Like, oh, oh we should so start that. Boxed. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's good. That sounds like something that yeah, you would say. People love hearing from a bunch of <laughs> uh, thirty, <clears> twenty, <throat> like year whatever old, we yeah. are, <laughs> something year olds. Yeah, I, uh, I know. Uh, I'm trying to get us back on track, slang. but this, but this does remind me that I was watching uh, the uh, PBS great performances of, of Anything Goes on uh, at my parents' house last night. <laughs> And um, Anything Goes, of course, is a almost 100-year-old uh, <laughs> uh, musical uh, written by Cole Porter. And um, one of the lines was like, oh, you're sending me. And I thought that, like, <laughs> and, I, and, and I, I, I freaked out a little bit because uh, I guess, you know, um, uh, lingo is cyclical. Yeah, um, yeah to yeah, be fair, it, was, it is, to be fair. Yeah, and he's we'll and guy, you're to... sending me you're sending me where and it's it's very funny. It's, <laughs> to it's to very be good. fair, this might mean that we'll get back to like 1940s gangster speak and I'm all for that. Um, yeah, that would be really great. Yeah. Um I can't wait to I can't wait to call legs gams. I, Delaney's I think we already determined was already heading there. Um That's true. So, yeah. So I, I think Delaney is Delaney Delaney is the the wave of the future. She is the, the wave the, of the future. Yes. Go ahead. All right. So, um so I thought that uh, for a while that Edison was saying all this, but uh, Edison is merely just, uh, you know, he's the, uh, he's worried. He's 3 po right now. He's, <laughs> oh, Stella, I'm so worried. You know, he's very, uh, he's worried about the Stella, which I would be too, because I think if Vegapunk dies, they all die, maybe? Has that been determined? Nothing's been determined. Mm, <laughs> no. Of course not. Well, ask the power um, scalers. Mm, I'm sure mm-hmm. they know. Uh, so Nami continues to to give a report on the whereabouts of everybody. She says, uh, after they moved the Sunny, Luffy, Frankie, and Bonnie went down toward you. So Brooke went to help Lilith, who got left behind. No Lilith left behind, everyone. Um, and uh, Usopp's no Vegapunk freaking out. left behind, I think. No, Although, Vegapunk except for behind. Pythagoras, yeah. who was dead, and Shaka, who was dead. Yeah, rip. Uh, Usopp's freaking out. Uh, he's he goes. Uh, How many times are we gonna have to deal with Buster calls? <laughs> wow, he's like he's, he's like the, the audience. audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Usopp yeah, is okay. always. To be fair, Usopp is always the audience, yeah. and so appropriate that he is the one saying this. Although Robin yeah. has been through three, and Usopp a mere two. I mean, that's not even. Yeah, uh, I, I wonder if he's just talking about the manga in general because he's yeah. Like, oh, remember so. Robin's flashback in you know in volume. Uh, I saw that. Yeah, or volume thirty-seven. Sometimes right? you shouldn't or... recommend it to your friends and family. Forty-one. Yeah. I think it's forty-one. Whatever. You know, I'm. I'm, I'm I don't care. Uh, <laughs> is Robin? Is Robin able enough to fill out her punch card? No, she's not. Mm. She's not. Chopper's telling her to lie back down because she's just got. She can only say ellipses, which aren't even words. Uh, Robin's so, not the most talkative to begin with. To be fair, no. It's it's you know good to keep Robin down because you have you know this the Straw Hats are our powerhouse right now. Yeah, don't don't um, make her get back into the robot. She's doing the Ray Ayanami right here at the start of it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't keep a good Robin down though. No, you cannot. Um, so uh, Nami continues to fill uh, Sanji and the rest of us in um, by saying the problem is 
the escape plan where the Vega Force One takes us from here to the shore isn't going to work anymore. Kizar ruined it when he destroyed the robot. What? You see, in my hand, and then, um, uh, so that's, 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 uh, Nami Different getting scenes us. here. Yeah, yeah, Nami just got us back up to speed because the flashback took, uh, took five years to complete. <laughs> um, so, uh, we forgot, unless you're rereading it, uh, To be, to be happened, fair, so. it has been many, many months since we, like, last heard the plan, so I wasn't, yeah, like, no, upset about this. It's good to have a bit of a primer here. Uh, so, we have, uh... Speaking of Lilith and, and, and Brooke, who I was I totally forgot about the two of them. Um, this is my Brooke duo says, right uh, here. He, yeah, it's a great duo. You see in my hands, moving a ship across <laughs> land is but a piece of cake. Yo! That's actually and in the Lilith sound said, effects. I didn't see that before. It does. Uh, no, what else is in the sound effects? Sloop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what did it mean? <laughs> Sloop, John. Yeah. We'll find uh that well yeah, I mean that's the kind of ship they're riding. Uh yeah. that's true. Uh, so perhaps that is why uh Is this one a sloop or one? was oh no Cor- the Caraval was uh Mary. Sorry. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, sloop, uh, yeah, sloop is, is, is the is the model of the, Okay, the sorry. We're really getting off topic. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. I, I I blame myself. Um Lilith says, uh very nice work, Bones. We'll be back near the rear entrance in no time. McCoy um <laughs> that, that's for just Alex and maybe two other people. Damn it, Lilith! I'm a skeleton, not a, a, a back doorman. <laughs> I'm I a guess... musician, not a doctor. I guess that's even better. Damn it, Lilith! I don't uh, go through the rear entrance. Um, chemotherapy. Uh, I, I, not not to um actually you, but uh, sloops are small ships. Okay, I, I get it, but. But this, but Iceberg said that this was a sloop, so I'm not going to... But Iceberg's a gigantic liar, and everyone knows that. Um, Uh, No, it's a sloop of war, maybe? Which is a... Cool. That's a cool name for a ship. Different kind of... Yeah. Uh, Where's our boat experts when we need them? With a single gun deck. (laughs) Sloop Um, of war just sounds like a very silly name for a ship. Sloop of war is the new God of War sequel. Yeah, it's the new Sony. Yeah. Yeah. Where he's a pirate instead of a Norseman or a Greek. Or he's just, you have to pilot a ship on ice. Um, he's like, oh no, I've been resurrected again. <laughs> okay, uh, chill. Okay, uh, so we go here. Uh, uh, Brooke has done a Minecraft pro strat and has turned the road to ice. Um, <laughs> Lilith is like, who would have thought turning ice clouds to ice for a runway? Brilliant idea and execution. Uh, and, you know, Brooke, yo, a compliment from the world's greatest genius that'll make anyone blush. Uh, so how do you stop it at the end? Oh, I thought hadn't thought that far ahead. Uh, <laughs> and then Lilith just slaps his uh, his his chrome dome here. Uh, we're gonna Ooh. slide right off. What's your plan then, genius? Uh, and I like to think Brooks a little sassy. He's like, well, what do you think it should be, Lilith? You're literally a genius. I called you that two panels ago. Uh, and then is, uh, Brooke uh, is sassy, so I do believe that, Jill. No, I, I told he probably you know practiced those arguments with himself when he was alone for fifty years. So he's like quick on it. Oh my god, yes, yeah, well, that'll do it. You know how like you you have a conversation with someone and then like a day later you're in the shower and you think of that witty comeback. Brooke had a lot oh, of time said... to like get that shit going. That's true. Uh, so then store. we go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so then we uh, we pretty much pull out um, back to the the base of the island and we see some marines setting up. Uh, and you hear an announcement, the lava phase above the clouds is still behind its barrier. Uh, as we get all the bombardments getting ready to be shot, fire cannons! Begin bombardment! Destroy the central factory and future city. Um, as some marines are not, not quick enough. Ah, I'm not on board yet! Careful of the pacifistas! This is such a cool, cool shot here. I love it from the sea. Some uh, interesting spelling on the... Um... <laughs> On the sign up well, there, I, I feel Oda's like respect for the binding is uh, non-existent. Spank well, records? Right. Is that? It, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vega, Vegapunk's kind of an amateur. Like you're supposed to hide it in a hidden folder on your uh, hard drive for your spank <laughs> records. <laughs> you don't put, it, you don't emblazon it in giant yeah. letters over a city. That's true. That's what, what. What the funny thing to me is, spank records actually does sound like a punk record label. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I, and beyond that. Well, it is his city. It's just a city filled with just him, so yeah. and robots. So 
I do think on a you know, on a, a slightly less comedic note, I do think it's very telling that uh, in the uh, sort of the noise of this panel. Uh, you have like the the guys saying ah I'm not on board yet, and the other ones saying careful of the pacifistas, which really kind of tells you the um, the hierarchy of um, of goals here on the uh, the Navy's part, which is like I, they don't care if the if the uh, all, all the uh, sailors are not on board yet, but be careful of the pacifistas. Mm. Yeah, the you know the worth of a human life as compared to these weapons. Yeah, mm-hmm. have we not drilled that home enough in this in this art particularly? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Um, and so on the next set of pages, uh, we go, uh, a close up look onto the, uh, the island here. We see one of the pacifistas, um, preparing his hand laser and, um, you know, blowing up some unidentified target, you know, knocking some, some trees over and stuff, um, looks very destructive. Obviously all the other ones are probably doing the same. And uh, Vegapunk is here, and he's just thinking, egghead. And we uh, we get this really cool panel of him just sort of, like, sunk to his knees as you see his uh, the buildings of this city that he built, this, uh, you know, shining city of the future of science and all those things. And the buildings are just toppling over left and right and explosions everywhere. And uh, then we go to uh, the vacuum rocket. Uh, where the uh, the PA is saying this is Fabrio phase. Next stop, Labo phase, and Atlas is like, "Here we go, <laughs> vacuum rocket." And uh, I love this. I don't remember seeing this. Maybe it was shown uh, the last time that uh, they used the um, I, they uh, used hydraulic it... chambers here. But oh no, no, they used that other one. They used that. That was the sorry. That the was the cloud style. motorcycle. I was thinking. From... Mm. Yeah. Never mind. Go ahead. Yeah, well, we're at the beginning of Egghead. They did use yeah, yeah. the vacuum rocket, uh, and we see here that it is uh, like they, they. It's like even stencil, like spray painted style hyper capsule on the side, which <laughs> is uh, even cooler than re- vacuum rocket. And uh, Frankie, of course, is super excited. Whoa, what is this? It's so fast, and you can tell it's going fast because the sound effect says "dazoosh." Um, <laughs> so we're we're moving at hyper speed here. Estimated travel time: thirty two seconds. Um, and uh, you can see they're they're going through the tube, which extends up into the clouds uh, to the labo phase above. But a uh, a light figure shing um, teleports into range, uh, and this asshole again. Uh, we just did this with the uh, with the tank stuff. Um, it is Kizaru who does the Amano Murakumo sword, and he slices through the uh, the the front of. What is now? He, he even sliced through the letter. It's now the hyper capsule. Um, <laughs> uh, really funny and yeah, really cool wow. actions. I I love the way that he drew specifically like the three dimensionality of the like the glass or or whatever. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. looks great. I, that, the I love it's going through the panel. Yeah. Um, I just yeah. realized that's that's where the U from Punk Records went. Oh, my <laughs> oh they swapped them by yeah. accident. Yeah. So I have a couple observations about this page. One is um, a cool panel, though. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the mm-hmm. the dissonance between Frankie's amazing face fault and uh, At- Atlas looking like a uh, cautionary video for oh my uh, wearing gosh. seatbelt <laughs> like, is, is truly hilarious and terrifying. It's that crash uh, test on the, uh, those, yeah. those TV ads, right? Yeah. Um, uh, second, uh, I know that it's Kizaru teleporting up, but it looks like somebody died in Smash Brothers in that first panel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, and... Uh, I wanted to make a joke about uh, the uh, the loudspeaker uh, trying to do it an evacuation come <laughs> come you know like from Austin Powers yeah. but because <laughs> they're evacuating but they were stopped in the middle of it. Austin Powers is a good movie. Jeff, it is. <laughs> or was that that was it right? Jeff, yeah, mm-hmm. that was one it. Of the best. Those are my one three observations. Best. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're on the next page. This one's. Okay, so uh, we cut to a shot from the ground of Sanji looking up at the capsule being sliced apart. Oh, damn it, Kizaru! Hang on, Bonnie, I'll save ya! He starts running for the uh, capsule, but um, they're in a little bit more trouble than just falling out because St. Saturn orders the 
pacifistas. And in his mind, he thinks, it's just exquisite. Shoot down, Bonnie and Kuma. So they ready their um, uh, arm cannons. The daughter he gave his life to save, killed by his own clone. Daddy! <laughs> um, the lasers start uh, charging up. Uh, we can see... I, 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 I just want to say I really like how, with the light effect on, on Kizaru in the last page, and right here, yeah. um, Oda's kind of brought back the super heavy shading technique that he mm-hmm. used a lot in Thriller Bark, and it just looks really good. For, this looks like, amazing, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've oh, always, yeah, this is what... I, I think it, it happened a little in Punk Hazard, but lasers really give uh, Oda credence to do yeah. some really cool stuff with the art, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, like, the composition of this whole shot, like, you know, the lasers charging, um, the shadows cast on, on everybody falling out of the capsule, um, the just destruction below of the whole, uh, Egghead Island, like, ah, it's, it, this is one of my favorite spreads, um, that Oda's done in a really long time. Uh, anyway, continuing on with, uh, Saturn's inner monologue. A fitting end for the insect that she is. It is the height of folly. And then we get uh, 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 Vegapunk's inner monologue um, after a a, a, a close-up shot of Bonnie looking scared, a tear dripping down her cheek. When I heard you'd become a pirate, Bonnie, there was one awful possibility as it flashed through my mind. That the Navy might order the pacifistas taking your father's form to shoot his own daughter without realizing the irony of it. Um, the, the look of horror on his face is just exquisite. We see the, you know, the, the cold look on the pacifista's face as it charges up. But then we cut to a moment that gives us hope. Because uh, as the Navy closes in on, hey, that's Straw Hat, right? Ugh, oh, can't eat anymore, can't move, which of course means he's about to kick everybody's butts since he's had That's me. That's the rule. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, capture him, he's one of the four emperors, those poor, poor fools. Um, and then we get a broadcast from some distance away. We failed to destroy the escaped ship. Must report back to Kizaru. Tell him they went to Egghead. Um... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. It's a ruined Navy ship. Mm-hmm. We saw yeah, ruins so yeah. earlier. It could be it could be a lot of things, right? Some people are saying might be uh, uh, Blackbeard. Could be, right? Because we don't, you know, Blackbeard, we haven't seen him in a while. He could be going that way. What I think it is, I think the Straw Hat Grand Fleet heard about what's going on. And uh, <laughs> at least some Straw Hat Grand Fleet pirates are on their way to provide support to their emperors. So I just want to, the, what my, mm. I don't have a theory, but from what I'm getting, uh, connecting the dots here, I think what Saturn was imagining was literally like just what he assumed happened. Like we're not seeing an actual scene that had happened, but we, what he thought happened. But there, I, I am of the opinion and the strong opinion that this is the same ship because it's called the escaped ship. And look, it yeah. could totally be another escaped ship, but that just seems like bad storytelling if you're calling it well, that. I, no, I, I don't think it's an escaped ship. I, I think there's yeah. a bit of this confusion. Is the Navy ship. This is the Navy. Yeah. yeah so, I, yeah, yeah. So the Navy ship got scuttled, right? Yeah. Yes. And I, I think what happened yeah, I, is they got intercepted by the Straw Hat Grand Fleet coming to save no, but Luffy they, they said we, while they were pursuing the escaping ship. So there's a ship that was escaping the island. It was going like one direction. It's still escaping. The, currently. the navy was chasing right. it, and they got intercepted by somebody who was heading to Egghead. Oh. So that could be yes. Blackbeard's pirates. Or I, my theory. Wow, I did not is, get that at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the revolutionaries. Yeah, yeah. The but, like we haven't we haven't heard. It could also be the revolutionaries, but yeah, mm-hmm. like I just think. Actually, it would make sense if the revolutionaries were following. Kuma. No, but That's the revolutionaries are still in. Com- 
So the revolutionaries are still back at Kamabaka. The thing about this is that they would have to have some motivation to save the escape ship. You're, I think the Grand Fleet idea is not bad because that, the, depending on who it is, um, they maybe would have reason. We we don't know what who was on the escape ship too. If there was a reason to save them, um. I, maybe it's big Stephen. Maybe working. this is just me, but it was just like the fact that they're talking about two separate ships was that might just be me. It just was not clear, but that might also be Oda. Um, um it. Oh, what if it's Shanks? What if Shanks did leave? But I. This seem yeah. this would be a weird. Yeah. We just time. Have, it would be it would be a weird moment for him to show back up. I'm just. I'm here you know, to I'm, end I'm, this saga. This arc. Yeah, uh, this we're arc, done. Yeah, yeah but like, <laughs> get I, out of I, here. I, yeah, it, it's just there's not a lot of people left <laughs> that no that that like the navy would just say they about right like it's it's got to be well, someone really tough. I mean, it could if be they, it could be if half they of a sentence. To, yeah, if they wanted to raise tension, they could you know it could be they could be anybody. You, you just we we might to, uh, pirates. They might have said it earlier in the sentence. Like that's possible too. Um, mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, like how many people in the One Piece world, we talked about how we had the flashback, but before that, we went all over the world and saw like every single character. Like how many people are left that could still be playing this role that we haven't been introduced to yet? Um, I mean, the thing is, the Blackbeard ship was already at Egghead when we saw them, God, like 20 chapters ago. Yeah, that was a Um, long time ago. I think it was like 1079, I think Ken had posted. Um, So I doubt that it's at least that specific ship from Blackbeard. I I think Jeff has a really good theory. Um like I can't I think it would have to either be someone we haven't thought of or someone I mean I guess it could be Kuzan and um Kuzan and uh what's his face? Von Ogre were on the ship with Pudding, but I don't know how that would even factor in here. Mm-hmm. Um could Unless, be like you know, uh, wild. Well, wild he cards. was there for he was there for the other two Buster calls. To be fair, so <laughs> yeah, uh, w- wild card of like one. other uh, former Whitebeard folks or the you know the Minx yeah. or the oh yeah Marco. Well, didn't Marco? Know. He had said, I don't know if he was going to do something, but there was something left open ended with him. But that would be weird. Marco twice for two sagas in a row comes in and is like, hey, I'm here too. I'm not going to do anything particularly important, but I'm cool. So. It'll be fine. Um, It'd be weird to reuse them. What? It, yeah. It, it wouldn't be, but it would be neat if yes. it was just buggy somehow. If it was just buggy and and the his me his home. new his new crew. If the ship was in cut in half, will. I would think that like Mihawk. But... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it was set on fire, or cannon. Um, it's it's hard to tell, but yeah. Look, it looks like it was blasted apart. It looks like um, several ships, but oh no, actually, it might be whatever. Um, we should talk about the chapter, and if anyone has any other theories on, on this, I'm happy to hear them. Um, Jeff, you want to start? Uh, you know, I think it's a good one. It, we're finally, you know, really getting to the action climax of this arc, and like, damn, you know, like, like it's if if Oda's going a little shorter on the page count, that's fine because like the the spreads in this are some of the best that he, you know. Some of the best he's done in a really long time because, like, there were impressive spreads, you know, in Wano too. But he was still having his eye problems then. Oh yeah. And, you know, this, this art's really in full form form for this one. Any other thoughts or? Um, you don't have to. I bet. Yeah, I mean, like this one doesn't feel like the plot advancing so much as just like kind of reminding us where everybody is and giving the setup for all, all the action scenes that are going to start like cascading out over the next few chapters. That's what it feels like to me. So it feels like, uh, yeah, I, you know, we just don't spend enough time with any characters for any of the scenes to really advance that far. No. And that's, that's like the problem. It's a two thirds of a chapter. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was just heating up, and then uh, Stephen. Yeah, I, I obviously, yeah, Jeff is right. It is, um, it is kind of just like let's check in, let's remind everybody 
you know, what, what all is, is going on, um, which is helpful because I, like, especially that, that panel that Alex is doing where, where Nami is sort of getting the, she's, she's doing the sit rep with, uh, Sanji and like so, some of the descriptions are like, okay. And then these people, you know, Luffy and Frankie and Bonnie went to you to Brooklyn that's helping with Lilith and yada, yada, yada. And, and, um, it definitely feels very messy, um, especially, you know, coming out of, uh, you know, a, a longer flashback where you're just like, man, I don't even remember um, all of these these groups like working together because they were probably set up in like one or two panels before the flashback. Um, so it is nice to get stuff kind of consolidated a little bit and, and hopefully kind of pointing in a meaningful direction as far as uh the action and um the uh the escape from the island uh getting getting the goal straight and everything um it is it 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 is a little annoying to me just kind of seeing uh the uh the Kizaru kind of rehash I did make a joke about it that you know this is basically the second time he has done this exact move which um feels a little you know it irks me a little bit as a storytelling device, but um, I get it. And obviously, Kizuru kind of got he he got his ass handed to him uh, briefly by Luffy, so um, he's got to do something useful here, I guess, to um, to prove his place. But um, it is kind of annoying. I do I do love the um, one, one detail that I really like about the um, that final spread with all of the lasers is that you can't even see the pacifistas that it's just like the um, yeah. the glinting effect, uh, which is really cool. It kind of it, it's one of those sort of paradoxical like it it highlights the danger even more somehow is that you can't even see them but you know they're 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 aiming at you and preparing to fire. Um, it's sort of like you know, playing a, playing a video game where you see the red dots from the snipers and you can't see the snipers, but you know, your time is limited. Um, and, um, so it's uh, exciting to see what it is as far as the mystery, uh, the mystery group. I think my, my initial assumption was either the revolutionaries or the, uh, the, the straw hat grand fleet. Although I had forgotten, I completely forgotten about, the one panel with the Blackbeard raft um, because it was so long ago and has been no reminder of it (laughs) since. And I'm like, it's like, I want it to be an ally because then that, you know, helps solve the the question of like, okay, how do they get away? How do they get out of this? Um, And I'm, you know, I kind of dread in this specific chapter. So it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I do dread like, okay, well, if it is Blackbeard, then what kind of a, you know, Faustian bargain is going to be like, what, what horrible thing is going to happen in exchange for him, like somehow breaking the, the straw hats loose of uh, this, um, you know, sort of siege they're under at the moment. Um, So I don't know. We'll see. I hope, uh, (laughs) and there's supposed to be a chapter next week. Um, I have not seen it yet. So I, I, you know, I don't know how many pages there are or if it's going to be even shorter or what um but we'll see i hope it's uh, i hope it's something satisfying because uh, we're, we're really at a very tense uh cliffhanger moment at uh, this point in time so i'm eager to see what's next you usually get them mondays right i won't put you on the spot if you don't want to answer mm, that. yeah or or earlier like that that would be very late um but okay. um you know we're not like quite in the where's that chapter uh um, yeah o- oda's in the uh he, he's in the special oda you know class of yeah. like he can submit as late as he wants pretty pretty much uh so you know well he, up to, his up to, to, up to a later. point yeah <laughs> i mean at some point it's got to go out um is that, so is that my question is is that class above or below the togashi class where hmm. he can just submit whatever month he wants <laughs> well, that's its own no, nobody nobody wants togashi's problems so he'll say no. in a class of his own yeah i yeah. think that's true i think oda right. definitely does not want no one wants togashi's problems no, um, no, nobody does. I think he is in. I think he's his own satellite there. Like, you know, the, the people will eat up Hunter Hunter whenever it comes out. Right. Uh, it doesn't really matter, uh, even if it's just one chapter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and most of it text. Uh, Stephen, any other? No, I think I said it. Okay. All right. Uh, Jill. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'll agree with the rest. Um, yeah, this is pretty much a like a transition chapter. Pretty much. It's it's the Buster Call is starting chapter. That's what's happening. We're getting uh, more you know pieces set. 
Um, I think there were some really standout moments and like lines and panels here. Um, I really love that line uh, from Saint Siren says, uh, "We don't need progress." You know, it. You know, I, I don't want to get into politics here on the podcast, but it. You know, sometimes you feel like people just don't want to move forward; they want to stuck, get stuck in their old ways. Um, and I thought that was mm. a, a really good line for him, actually destroying like the future island, so literally destroying the future. Um, so I thought that was a good one. Um, I am also a huge fan of uh, the panel with all the ships getting ready for the buster call. Um, and then like uh, just Egghead being so cloudy, it, it looks so ominous. Um, although I will say, I, it was mentioned last week on the podcast, are buster calls really a threat anymore? I'm gonna be super real with you. Zoro could just cut all those ships in probably like three slices. Like just get them over there to like look at it. I don't know, man. Like, past hey, Zoro, can you find those ships? Well, yeah. that's the problem. He would never well, he, Jim be able to go, find Jinbei them. will take him underwater, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we force him to do it. I mean, yeah, like, that is a good question. Like, how strong is a Buster Call relative to, say, Kaido's blasts, mm. right? To, to me, <laughs> it's less of a strength thing. I think it's like a box you have to check here, though. Like, look. They're, they have ancient history here, and the other two mm. times, you know, that, that's been... and Well, actually, to be fair, the second Buster call was because he accidentally pressed the thing. Like, that <laughs> uh, spanned him. So, mm-hmm. I don't know if that one, like, could be counted in the regime there. But I I think it's just, like, checking the box. We have to destroy this island. What are we going to do? The thing that we always do. Um, and they can't use the mother the flame. flame probably because they were trying to. I was trying to find during this manga recap, but they were trying to save three things. I think it was the seraphim, the laboratory, one of the laboratories, and one other thing. Uh, York. Oh, right, York, York. Yeah. Um, so they can't just wipe it out of existence, which would be mm. the easy easiest thing to do. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, our our yeah. friend on Discord Sai also mentioned that, like narratively speaking the buster call you know they're they're making lots of allusions to ohara here too and so the buster call being the same the tool that is used to wipe out you know human knowledge is kind of uh reinforcing that you know that role in the story which is interesting i think it is more of a story device than it's supposed to be like you know they could beat this because of course they can but they're also busy with other stuff like Zoro yeah. is fighting Luchi, and Jinbei is trying to find Zoro so he doesn't get lost while he's doing it. Everyone has important things to do, is my point. Um, mm-hmm. Sorry, Jill, go ahead. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, especially because it leads to this, uh, probably my favorite panel of the chapter is um, is Vegapunk just like kneeling there and watching, you know, the thing that he has built crash a- around him. And, you know, his whole life is towards progress. Uh, it's it's a really haunting image there with his... Uh, I think he's had some really great expressions this chapter. Um, but uh, yeah, I I, uh, I guess my last thing to say is I think it's the revolutionaries. I think they have so many connections to this arc and that they would want to save Vegapunk, who is, you know, looking into the past um, and, and has, you know, access to weapons and stuff that might help them. Um, I just, uh, I think that's kind of w- narratively where it's going. Could be wrong, but... It, it would also, like... It would be a really, really strong moment, I think, emotionally and narratively for just after this arc about Bonnie reconnecting with Kuma for this to finally be the moment where Luffy meets his dad. That Mm. would be... Yeah, you know the the dad's coming to save the day. They're all the way on the other side of the world. Is the only (laughs) my only issue? Like, but Dragon can just. We don't know what the hell dragon. We don't know what the hell dragon. Dragon might have a some kind of power that lets him uh, get places. Strong gust of wind. (laughs) You know, I'm surprised none of you have said Sabo yet. Uh, Yeah, um, he's revolutionary. The the ship. I mean, yeah, and the ship is on fire. Yes, I mean Hmm. Sabo. He was in. He was at Egghead also. Like they're all, I'm not saying not Egghead. They're at Kamabaka. Like, That's why I was gonna say Kamabaka's no, on the not, other side yeah. of the red line, I think, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Sabo but, Sabo doesn't have magical teleportation power. It's manga. Yeah. But, but what if it's no, what if it's Sabo didn't return? Did Sabo return? He was at yeah. Lucia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah, he, he, remember he, he talked right. Right. He did come back. Uh, yeah. 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 Here, I, I think they showed where the revolutionaries were like a chapter or two. A lot ago. has I'm happened check. here. It <laughs> is it it's 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 only January. Um, yeah, January. <laughs> that's that's uh, 
but they they did recently uh, say where the revolutionaries were, and I think they were. I think Kamabaka's in the grand on the Grand Line, right? It's not in the New World. Uh, yeah, because no, because yeah? Sanji was yeah, there. Yeah, Kamabaka. Yeah, yeah, Kamabaka would have. Yeah, because be, otherwise um, Sanji would have gone into the New World before everyone else. Um, so I want it to be Bon Clay somehow. He's he's the best. Oh he's, man, he, that he would be so good. I mean, we all oh, agree man. that would be amazing. <laughs> Uh, bon Clay being like the head of the Grand Fleet. But who would he show up looking like is the question. Because they would obviously Ooh. be, oh, a, you know, a, a surprise. Mm. What is he wearing? <laughs> who is he wearing? Yeah. Who is he? <laughs> yeah. That's the question. Literally. Uh, Jill, did you have anything else? Uh, nope, I'm good. Uh, I, I, I do. Sorry, oh, before, before we go on. I, I do want to say um, I, I appreciate that Jill brought up the um, the progress quote because you really see like here more than anywhere else the um the dichotomy between saturn and vegapunk saturn mind you the godhead of science like he's like the minister of science he's the guy in charge of science who is saying oh yeah no it's fine if we set scientific progress back 100 years because the point is to him we'll still be in power you know like we don't need progress like progress is incidental um whereas vegapunk has Mm. it's always been clear even if he seems misguided at certain points, he he has always kind of stated that his, you know, his view of scientific progress is a very democratizing one where it's like, you know, free energy for all and stuff like that. Um, And yeah, his, uh, uh, his direct response to that line is it's for the sake of humanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So I, I I really appreciated that, you know, that sort of um, thematic um, clash there. Yeah. Agreed. I I think it's also that it's not that technology doesn't matter at all to him. It matters if it as you know as like the mother flame is good for him because they could destroy whatever they need to and stay in power. Death Star like you know we won't need the Senate because we it's, could yeah you know. yeah they they only care about the military stuff that that Vega Punk makes for them. They've only ever cared about the weapons. Luckily this um, this kind of scientist doesn't exist in the real world, so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good thing that the world government isn't like a metaphor for any <laughs> real global hegemony that may no. or may not exist at this current point in time. Well, we could be it's it's a comic and it has no grounding in reality. We could be we could say Yeah, that for yeah, sure. it's just it's yeah. just it's not I, about anything. Speaking of, I did want to say, I I do like, I think there are a lot of uh, parallels with Einstein and, and Vegapunk in that Einstein did have this really pacifistic, like, outlook, but his mm. weapons were used, I mean, his, I'm sorry, his, what he created was used for some really horrific things. And it was something that I know, from the little I know about Einstein, is that he wrestled with those demons and if... I, I think Vegapunk has a lot of three dimensionality, three dimensionality because of that kind of thing. Like he is not, he has good ideals, but the means don't always justify the ends. And he's done some stupid things in that they could come back to like this, the stuff with Kuma. Um, I, it's, it's, I really, I really like his characterization in the flashback too, and how he's like yeah. grown mm-hmm. since then, because like you can tell that like, he was never really comfortable with any of the world government stuff, but like he needed their money. Yeah. Um, he, he couldn't do any of the research he wanted to do without it. So he just kind of let himself be willfully, willfully blind to the evil that he was. He stole Kuma's will. Yeah. yeah. He did. He well, I mean, that. yeah, he, well, he tried that everything. He wasn't he could. blind to, well, but, but Kuma he, also, it's not like Kuma didn't say yes to, to that as well. He could have just done the operation for free, I still think. Um, yeah. Although, I guess once the government got wind of it, it was going to happen one way or the other. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, Steve. Um, hmm. Yeah, this was a very short chapter, so... Uh, I, I feel like I've kind of noticed this lately. Maybe it's just me. Uh, I don't know. I feel like the, the, the Kizaru's Oda has been drawing lately. His face is... Uh, exceptionally, you know, <laughs> distorted. I don't know. Maybe I just have not seen him in the manga in a while, but maybe this also kind of allows us to ask the question, hey, Kizaru, why the long face? Uh, <laughs> how long were you I, saving okay. that one? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe like 
15 minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it, yeah, I think, you know, it was, I think Steve and Zach kind of put it well. It's like, oh, this is a post flashback uh, refresher telling you where all the, the pieces are on the board. Um, so, like, nothing really resonated with me other than the fact that I just really enjoyed some of these spreads. Mainly, I think the last one, just like that insane bird's eye view uh, looking down on Egghead and Oda definitely had a lot of help with his assistance for sure, but still, it's uh, yeah. the team coming together to make something like that. It looks great. Um, but other than that, I like, you know, a few funny gags here and there, but other than that, like, just solid. Um, yeah. Alex. Yeah, uh, I thought that for one of these transitional chapters, they captured a lot of really fun stuff, uh, like the chaos of um, of of the troops uh, during a Buster Call. I think that, um, you know, when we think of Buster Call, we think, you know, here we go again, and or, you know, oh, well, the Straw Hats have already survived one Buster Call, Robin survived two, so who gives a shit? Also, the Mother Flame exists, so who really gives a shit? But... Uh, there's still civilians, um, who have to escape and, um, are there, uh, the Navy, I would call them civilians. I, think that's the I would not that's call them not civilians. civilians. They are it not is. civilians. They are <laughs> literally the opposite of, yeah. Like, yeah. What, whatever. Fucking Myrmidons. All right. How's that? They, they're, they're on, they're, you know, ground level and, and, uh, you know, the, the one, the one bit that really resonated with me was the the guy who was like, "No, nah, I'm not on board yet." I I don't know. I love that. Uh, we don't really get to see that. Uh, we haven't gotten to see that so much in, until I guess Egghead with the Kobe stuff. Um, we sort of get to see uh, the Navy side of things a little bit, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think that uh, I'm echoing Steve here when I say that. Yeah, yeah, he's always looking a little more melancholy these days. He's I, we, you know, I mentioned this last time I, uh, we talked about this, is that he's, you know, sort of uh, a little less than gray area these days, and he's sort of trying to figure it out. I, I, I like that we've been getting a little bit more of a three dimension, uh, third dimension from from the admirals uh, as of late. So it's kind of neat. He needs um, to lighten great. up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, lighten up, dude. I mean, they're nice. they're Very all good. really interesting characters. Like the way the way that each of them like relates to the navy it, it, like it seems like i i like what they've been doing with the sunglasses on kizaru mm -hmm. you know the yeah. how like you can't see his expression as he's like taking these orders in and it really seems like he's just like having almost as much doubt as vega punk but like absolutely just sticking to the just following orders i'm just following orders trying to come compartmentalize sure. it um and then you know aokiji uh breaking away from the navy sakazuki like like seizing power and then the tree guy i forget the tree guys Ryo Ryo Ryo. Ryo. yeah yeah he's he, the the new one just <laughs> being like insanely insanely uh ultra nationalistic saying the quiet part loud um i it's, think we could say just... fascistic fascistic yeah um <laughs> Yeah, he's the yeah. worst he of them all. Straight... Somehow, yeah, somehow he is. Yeah, he really beat Sakazuki. I was shocked about that. At least How do Sakazuki I make a character worse than Sakazuki. At least Sakazuki is like annoyed by the Celestial Dragons. It seems, but like Ryoku is yeah. like, yeah, this all all this awful stuff. Sakazuki's so, so not yeah, happy so... with corporate, but he'll do his job. So yeah, Sakazuki... Ryoku Gyu, as soon as he starts Sorry. the job, is like, you know what, I'm. I'm the milkshake duck. You got me. It's me. You hired me. I'm I'm the cute duck that's racist and fascist. Sorry. So, so Sakazuki is power hungry, right? Sakazuki yeah. just wants to be on top. Whereas Ryokugu is a true believer yeah. in all of that shit. Like, he, he really thinks that if you're not part of the world government, you're literally subhuman. And he can do whatever he wants to you, and that's that's. Well, he that's talks really a lot like Saint Saturn, really. He talks, yeah, yeah, a lot of the same which way. is not surprising. He, yeah, yeah. yeah he, Sakazuki he, doesn't talk that way. So that leads me to uh, my next point. <clears throat> I uh, I really love that we get um, Saturn's inner monologue here. Um, truly a piece of shit, <laughs> uh, uh, and. Uh, 
you know, he... <laughs> this is how he gets his jollies, you know? Like... <laughs> Uh, Great, that's poetic, in my head uh, now. Yeah, yeah po- poetic irony. Like, it's like, yeah, you know, it really gets me going. <laughs> Fucking clones of the father killing the daughter. Ah. I, that's I, that's why I, I use I, I, the word uh, folly. That's like an instant tip off that you, it's a villain talking because nobody yeah. says folly when they're like a good guy. <laughs> no, I like true. The, I do like the Vegapunk says like the. The Navy might order the pacifists as taking your father's form to shoot his own daughter without re- without realizing the irony of it. As though if yeah. they appreciate the irony and they do it on purpose, then it's okay. I think yeah, it's, yeah. I like. Well, I, I do think that's. Oh, go, Jill. Sorry, I'll be quick. I like that Saint Saturn like has always been like, oh, I'm above you people. You're insects. Like you don't really matter. But at the same time, he got such a hate boner for Bonnie. It's like God, oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he really he's like does. children. No, uh, like, really, he's like he, Roald Dahl. He, he, he is Roald Dahl. Yeah. <laughs> he's a racist. That explains it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great books. Like he's a just piece of shit. <laughs> All yeah, that other just stuff. A total piece of shit. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. Chi- they must punish, punish the wicked children. I could say he's I, um, anti-Semitic, but his books are good. But Jesus Christ, he was an awful person. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to kind of bring up the Vegapunk line. Um. I think, like, this just shows that Vegapunk is a true genius because, you know, generally, I mean, I, you know, as somebody whose father is an astrophysicist who tends to, uh, you know, bring up the every possibility of everything, uh, of course, that Vegapunk, uh, real, like, <laughs> one of the possibilities was that the Navy might order the pacifistas to kill you and also it, they look like your dad. Like, that's... I. I not a possibility that, you know, one would think of off the top of their head, but hey, he's a genius scientist yeah. who also might have read the manga. So I, I <laughs> To like, be fair, he created like those weapons that look like her dad, so he's probably yeah. thinking yeah. about it a bit. It, it's timely, yeah. too, because that pretty much happened in the uh, the anime this week as well uh, yes. at the end, so. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I want to bring up that, that one San- uh, Sanji panel where he does his little trademark uh, smile and thumbs up uh looks like oda like might have redrawn the mouth or something uh i don't know steve if you look at that because it looks like it's like super dark compared to everybody everything else on that uh on that page it's very possible he whited out like the original smile he like fucked it up and it's like oh no let me it, his, that. his beard looks a little odd but it's a little scribble. scribbly a little scribbly little, um squiggly. i mean um, of all the things in this uh, chapter i don't think that's the most important but yeah no, but I, it's something I noted. Yeah, no, no. I, I, it, yeah. Could, could have been it, the G-nib leaked a little. Yeah, yeah. his teeth are, like, like he, he looks, like, a little nervous, almost. No, no, no. I think that's, no, I, yeah. that's just Oda. That's I think not, that's Oda. That's yeah, not yeah, Sanji. It, yeah. It yeah, there's just a little bit of wobble around his teeth. Don't blame that on like, Sanji. Yeah, got, sorry, Steve. It does, yeah, it does look a little bumpy. And then, yeah, I do notice on the next panel over... He's completely devoid of facial hair. Just shave. (laughs) That is the most consistent. Correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but that's the most consistent mistake I think he's made in the series. That and like Ace's Ace's constantly disappearing necklace. And uh, well, but he's dead. Queen's mustache. Oh yeah. No, you can't say you you can't use that or Kaido's mustache. You can't use Ace that Ace joke because Ace has continued to show up uh, despite all things in the pre time scale. Oh. And You're still right. will be, and often or not, will, that necklace will be forgotten. Yeah. I think that's you know, have a hole a, in him. The, the <laughs> biggest, <laughs> I, like I was going to say, the biggest error that Oda makes is he keeps forgetting Ace is dead and inserting him in the manga. Um, <laughs> Alex, yeah. did you have any other thoughts? I do have one more thought. Uh, it's the uh, the addition of, oh yeah, the escape ship. Remember the escape ship? And then. We failed to destroy the escape ship. Uh, they went to Egghead. I, I think that, yeah, I think the pos- I think that it's initially when I read it, I thought that the ship got the better of them, and then yeah, that's how I read it around and did a U turn. But yeah. uh, no, I think Jeff's right. It's a you know a uh, somebody else entirely who was on their way to Egghead and you know and save them. Uh, Blackbeard, it could be Blackbeard just because we need to remind the audience that Blackbeard is, is here, but we see them parked outside of Egghead for a yeah, while. Yeah, I don't, so I still don't, I don't think I it don't is. know if, I, it might be a thir- another, another ship. Mm. 
to add to this. Well, this didn't happen yesterday, right? Cosmic was... gumbo that we call One Piece. Um, uh, the Egghead arc. So Egghead. So yeah, when did that all? When did it happen that that the transmission well, the I think is present yesterday. tense? Yeah, but it it seems there's no black or gray. So the ship oh, getting back yeah. must be today. So, yeah. So how long have the Straw Hats been there? Because what does yesterday mean exactly? Yesterday was the day that they were all in their, uh, they were all escaping from York and all the terror stuff that she was doing. Uh, this okay. is so the next morning. they've gotten to sleep since then, maybe? No, no. <laughs> uh, I think they kicked, no, oh, just... they, I think they tried, no, some of them tried to, no, but no. I think they were They were sleeping busy. during the flashback. Yeah. yeah. Ah, yes. yeah. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> during that three out. seconds where it happened, um. This uh, this arc really needs Hunter Hunter style timestamps <laughs> to just show everything that's happening. They always happening. they always need that in One Piece. I'm going to be honest. Um, like Dress Rosa happened in like four hours, and it's a hundred volume, a hundred yeah. hundred chapters. Oh god. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ed, did you, or uh, Alex? I think that was your last one, right? That's it. That's Ed. It. Yeah, uh, this chapter is just sort of setting up the... It's really setting up Saturn for, I think, a fall. Because he doesn't know what's happened with the ship. And he is a guy who seems to really enjoy being in control and setting up traps for people in order to sort of psychologically torture them and put them in situations that they think that they can't escape from. And the Buster Call is just another, another symptom of that. But, uh, you know, I think the you know prospect of Luffy going gear fourth again uh would really put a <laughs> it would be a factor that he couldn't control and that would be very uh very unfortunate for him i think he, he would react poorly uh, to that or he would try to up the ante uh after that but maybe the i don't know maybe the straw hats will get to uh to escape or so, maybe it, maybe it is the blackbeards who have, who have arrived here but um you know, it's it's interesting because you know when he, when he talks about uh, we don't need any um not innovation we don't need progress it's uh, it's, I just remembered something from, you know, reading like ancient history, of back in the early debates about Christianity and what was you know, what was orthodox and what was considered not orthodox. The idea that in, in, innovation was the word. Innovation was a bad thing because innovation would go against orthodoxy, and that would go against the you know that that would sort of destabilize the whole system here. If we're inventing new things, the system is already perfect, so it's perfect for Saturn. It's appropriate for him. Yeah. He doesn't need any progress. He's at the top of the world, mm-hmm. uh, and we're setting the sort of ideological stakes of the, you know, the, the Luffy is for freedom and you know the ability of people to, you know, move possibly around the world uh, much more freely than they do currently. But uh, Saturn, the sort of structured system that the world has currently, works perfectly uh, for him. So he wants to maintain it. I think at all costs. I mean, and, it's, uh, it's he's manipulating everyone to do his to do his bidding, and it's starting to take its toll on uh, Kizaru, for example. Uh, it seems that way. Yeah, I mean, like Kizaru seems like he really believes in justice. There's like, sure, what's just like an about ideal? This? Yeah, there's an ideological divide, I think, between the admirals who like sincerely believe in in justice and the ones who are like using that as cover to to I th- I think do it's what that, they want. I think it's just that they have different definitions of it. Like I think I really think Sakazuki thinks he's doing justice by killing all of his enemies uh because well, if you have no more bad quote unquote bad people you know there we go justice well, so- has been done. Yeah. I am well I think Sakazuki is more of a relativist if anything. I think he believes that justice is whoever prevails. We need a philosophical paper on this, an abstract <laughs> of some sort. Yeah, I mean, like that. Yeah, that's that's one of the big questions. But like, um, you know, each marine having their own definition of justice is like a really important thing. But um, Fujitora, we didn't mention, is a completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and um, yeah, I. The elders and and the the dragons are such an interesting aspect of One Piece's world that really hasn't been touched that much. But, like, um, at the same time, they're at the center of everything. Like, everything's set up to benefit them. Um, Yeah, I I think you're... 
you're right that that's about to like really uh he's saturn's probably about to get what's coming to him what's been coming to him for the last like very long time 800 years last, yeah 800 years yeah, yeah. or so have the elders been al- uh, alive we that don't long we don't, we don't know yeah, we don't. yeah. Good question. they they seem ageless from or like we don't know if they're immortal but they had seen at least seem to be not aging from what we have seen there's a lot of that theory but, with like the op op fruit and stuff like that yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the immortality. Or, but they could also just be Operation. like the oldest members of the most powerful families of the celestial dragons, right? Yeah. 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 Um, Ed, did you have anything else? No, I that was um, I thought Brooke was funny. Brooke was really funny. I like that. Was funny. Sneaking in. He, he had so many there. good moments. This the, this was a good Brooke chapter. This was a. We need more of those. I've always said. Um, I'll, I'll try and keep it short. Um, I was just looking at the chapter 800, which ends in the Sun's Cup thing with the, uh, the <laughs> Straw Hat Fleet. Sorry, I was trying to remember the name of it. Um, and they do say, that specifically, after this moment, they will each grow in power until they eventually cause a great incident of historic propo- proportions. But for the moment, that is a story no one no- yet knows about. Um, inc- the, the word incident... I think is really interesting. The second fact that we haven't really talked about, the world knows what is going on here in that Straw Hat Luffy, the emperor is held up in egghead with Vega punk, supposedly Mm -hmm. kidnapping or whatever it is. So they, they would know that Luffy is not, not that he's in danger, but that may need some assistance in this, in this matter. They didn't know what was going on in Wano. They didn't mm-hmm. really know what was going on on Whole Cake Island until after, because that all happened pretty quick as well. And, 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 was and a, it was very personal. It was and, yeah. and, and like, like I well, think... Well, Dressrosa was at, was before the Grand Fleet. For, yeah, so. for the Grand Fleet. And Zoe yeah. was yeah. its own thing, so that doesn't... So but also, the first what, ha- what happens within an Emperor's territory kind of stays there. That's um, true. Unless and Big, big News, news Morgan's, Morgan's was, is there. He was at the <laughs> wedding, though. Like, he, yeah. Yeah, he had he other couldn't things to do. report on it. Well, the he news did, was but... happening to him. Yeah, it was that's the problem. <laughs> oh, that damn Tomate Baco, uh, box uh, coming back into play here. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I, the more I think about it, Jeff, I think you really hit the nail on the head. And But the problem is when I really like a theory, then if it's anything besides that, you know, a little disappointment. Um, the other thing, yes, York safety, punk records, and the power plant were the three things. So not even the Seraphim. I guess they don't care about those. But... Again, they say everything else is disposable except for Sat- St. Saturn says in chapter 1090, except for those three things. So, you know, I, I, I know the Mother Flame is more of a threat, but I, I get why the Buster Call was used from the perspective of the world government here. Not even story-wise, which I think we covered. Um, like, I get it. That's probably their biggest card before secret Mm. big other cards um no no one's mentioned the uh ancient robot that got activated when luffy went gear five in chapter 1092 i've been researching while we've been talking um i i did notice that is when luffy went gear five and was on the island of egghead the rest of the time he's like up above going crazy i think Mm -hmm. or whatever the hell he was doing it before that um, so Luffy is, the, I think the, the combination of Luffy's fed as, uh, Jeff so astutely pointed out, we, we have that coming. Uh, if gear five is activated, then we may have an escape through the giant robot, which would be awesome. Um, I'm also torn. Do we not have an escape at all? Do we not need to escape? Um, is that, that's, that's a third option here because we do have a lot of strong people around here. I really think Saturn with everything we see here is going to get his comeuppance. I think the fact that he sees the dramatic irony in the story means that it cannot happen personally. Yeah. Like the fact that it's being literally telegraphed to us, like if it was just like a s- subtext um, or like kind of hinted at a little bit, uh, then I'd be like, okay, that might happen. Kuma might be killed with a pacifista but this this like ooh, the dramatic irony I'm, I'm salivating at the dramatic irony that's happening the tragedy um like that's a little too much in the reader's face um so and, and 
Also, like knowing how Oda does cliffhangers, if yeah. if it was going to happen, it would have happened at the end of the chapter. Yeah, or you would. It would have been like Ace, where you uh, kind of know what's about to go down, uh, but yeah, you don't you, completely or, see it. Yeah, there, there'd be like a like the last few panels would not have been unrelated things right. that could completely screw up his plans. It would have been, you know, like, oh, the blast happening and we see, like, some stuff disappearing in the light. And it's like, oh, no, what's, you know. I think I, what, only, have, was... I, think I only have two other things I want to mention since we did say how great Brooke was. Um, yeah, the the artwork, this chapter was amazing from the cupsole as we called it, to, but <laughs> l- legitimately, I did really enjoy that. I love any breaking the fourth wall panel panels, um, and that was a fun one. Um, <clears throat> we didn't mention the last spread, he, the, the hug sound effect being so prominent right in the middle of that, of that amazing panel, um, I think is, is an interesting choice. I, I think it's obviously supposed to, interesting, good, but interesting, um, it's supposed to remind the reader about, you know, everything that, that's been going on there with Bonnie and Kuma. Um, but it also makes me just wonder, we're still, we still really don't know how their Kuma is. Right. Um, right. And mm. so it's supposed, it definitely makes you think about it more. I also don't think Kuma's going to die before we kind of find out what the hell's happening mm-hmm. there. Um, like that. And also Frankie's there. Um, unless, well, to be fair, Frankie's like one of the one members that could get pretty incinerated and be all right. Um, yeah, it's, uh. this is, it's a, it's a brilliant panel in particular. I, this is like a color spread, uh, worm's eye view mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like he's done this, he's definitely done this in color spreads, like falling from the sky or whatever. Super cool though here. Um, and as Steve said, the assistants did a really tremendous job on all the, city below um it's at least a, I, yeah go ahead to point out something like i really love this panel i love this like this spread so much and the the capsule popping out of the um out of the uh panel on the page before are like my two favorite spreads but this yeah. one what's really interesting about it is like oda doesn't use screen tones very often right mm-hmm. and like so here You've got like the white, you've got the screen tones being used for the patterns on the building, the the lighter screen tone, and then the heavier screen tone on the, like all of their outfits, uh, and then the like the dark black. So it's got more depth to it yeah. than most of Oda's spreads do, right? You know, like mm-hmm. so it's it's I think when yeah. the lasers come into play I'll say, Oda, like, my favorite panels, there's some, I think Thriller Bark, as you said, Thriller Bark is probably my favorite uh, in his art, like, his artistic ability is just... Yeah, 100%. Like, you know, you could think what you want about Thriller Bark, you might be wrong, but that's fine. But his art was just top, like, top of the world there. Like, he was... I'm just going to throw my my, uh, controversial opinion um, that I share with my buddy Miles, who got me into One Piece initially, um, that Thriller Bark is, like, peak One Piece formula. Like, the, the like, straw hat snowball of they arrive at a place, some interesting stuff happens, they start fighting, the fight gets bigger, it gets bigger, what the heck, oh my god, it's so, you know, it's just, like, the perfect execution of the One Piece formula, mixed with, as you said, just gorgeous artwork yeah right like like i yeah that's one of my favorite the way that he like shifts to almost like a scooby-doo tone for the (laughs) whole thing um by just adding like more blacks it's such a subtle choice that that sets the whole thing apart one absolutely one of the best. Yeah, I didn't mean to turn this into a gush session about Thriller Bark. But, I mean, he does it... What I mean, what I meant to, like, in Shaw Buddy, Marineford, Punk Hazards, wherever... I, I mentioned this before, but wherever lasers are, he... It, I feel like Oda could really flex those muscles. Um, and I don't think this was any exception. And the last thing I just <laughs> wanted to say was I love Vega Punk. Um, I think that needs to be said. Um, I'm just going to come out here and say it. Um, but I I love the in that last panel we see him in in the chapter. He looks like a Disney character, 
um, which is something Oda, I feel like his early stuff um, really evokes. Um, and I th- like I love the combination of Vegapunk's absolutely ridiculous design, but yet it's like so perfect in its ridiculous way and an insanely deep character in, in just this amount of time. And, and like the opening, someone said, you know, I've always wanted a, I forget in the last week's piece together, I've always wanted a Muppet version uh, of One Piece. Well, Vegapunk is the Muppet they're giving us. And maybe that's why I love him. But uh, I, I do, I do love the, the three dimensionality of that. And I think we are getting that with Kizaru a little bit. Oh, that's the last thing I want to say. Kizaru can't do anything here because he would get murdered by everyone else. Like, until he's in a position where he thinks, okay, now I could do what my heart tells me without dying in the process. Like, I think he has a, he probably has a cowardly streak because he is in, in the fact that he is um, opportunistic and, you know, he, he's doing his job and that's all he cares about. But when his job you know, he doesn't want to lose his job, even if it's making him do really shitty things. Like he's got a family to support, a family of light of light bulbs or something. I don't know. Um, but I, I, you know. I was gonna say, I, you know, on that topic, um, that uh, I, I, I wasn't on last week, but I did want to reiterate and and say, uh, I thought Steve had a really, really good comment about Kizaru last week, which is which was prompted by him sort of saying like to Frankie and the Straw Hats, like, "All right, it's been two years. Like, show me, how, show me what you got now." Um, and that he took that as like a, a Kizaru kind. There, there's a part of Kizaru that wants to lose, and I, I think that is, I think that is a really insightful um, yeah. view of of his um, motivation here, which is that he's he's going to do his job. He has pride in his job, and he is going to do his job but i think he i think he does want to lose because in this case the the stakes of what he would lose personally by doing that you know to all all of these friends all these people that he has close ties to i don't think he wants to lose them and so i think having that excuse in his back pocket like he, he wants to lose fairly and have that you know be the reason why you know the the people that he um he knows and cares about got away and are still alive or something um, and I think that was a really, that was a really smart comment and it does explain a lot of, um, kind of what, what he's doing. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for saying that. No, I, <laughs> it, it's true. I thought that was, it, Kizaru's hard to, he's hard to read. I'm, yeah. He's hard to accept his lips. Um, speaking of lips, I was looking at that page where gear five Luffy shows up and the robot wakes up. His lips are doing something like otherworldly. So this is nothing new. No um, new taxes. <laughs> That's what any reading. other thoughts on the chapter 13 page chapter i knew was going to go way over an hour uh in discussion um if not let's move on to the next segment This is the Piece Together segment, where we take your questions, comments, theories, and read excerpts from St. Saturn and the Murder Factory, which was something I just realized I think we said it during the break, but, you know, still good. Jeff, you get credit, I think, for that one. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Jeff is sticking around. Um, just in case you have to go in the middle, though, do you want to let people know where they could find you? I don't want to want to make sure yeah, those yeah. plugs get in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So you can find me on YouTube, on Mother's Basement. Uh, we've also got our Basement Life podcast channel where we're going to be posting a podcast soon for the first time in a while. We're, we're kind of sporadic with that, but we're trying to get uh, – we're, we're going to be on like a regular schedule this year. Um, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Jeff Thu. That's also going to be more regular this year. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at, at – G zero F F T H E W G off through. I came up with that many years ago when I wasn't thinking about, um, <laughs> explaining it to people verbally ever. And yeah. we have a, a few burden. people like that here. <laughs> uh, Brodsky is the biggest, uh, uh, sinner in that regard. Um, all right. We're going to start with our first segment, which comes from our Patreon subscribers and Ed, what's that called? Zach, that's called, this piece and alex is going to read it to us our discord questions 
Well, we're kicking off this piece with the Slayer King, stealing Hopkins hats, catchphrase, hey OPP, how it be. And that's it. Uh, cool. Not answering but, that question. We talked about the weather at the beginning, and we're done. Yeah. yeah. Re- Rebuster Call Patch says, uh, original Phantom Parakeets. I've got a theory. It's not uh, the I guess that's what OPP stands, yeah, not, yes. yeah. stands for. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who left Egghead with no information on the Void Sentry could only be one of the regular civilians or CP agents who were on the island yesterday. Given that whoever escaped the escape boat has to be someone who can help our protagonist in some way. Maybe they're the mystery person who fed Luffy? Perhaps a cook with the ability to make a lot of high-carb uh, carbohydrate food in a flesh. You know him, you love him. It's the mad, 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 Dio no, Mads. No. no. Mad World. No. It's not. Wanze. No. no. Sa, 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 sa. He's going to go, go, go to revive Nico okay. with his powerful no. ramen special. No. This is reverse eye patch. No more questions ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say. So, straight to jail. The, 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 I think didn't he specifically say uh, Vegapunk said that they didn't know anything about the he said Boy Century? That. Well, yeah, I guess. But why would he lie if the, he thought they were already dead? Would I lie? I So, uh, really quick, uh, for those listeners who, aren't, uh, who haven't been around the block, uh, Zach hates Wanze. Uh, inexplicably. <laughs> Did they need an explanation? <laughs> inexplicably. I don't know if it's inexplicably. It's pretty He's got explicable. such a fun design. I think you're nuts. I think you're nuts. It's, it's not the design. It's not the it's design. The, it's the idea. It's the visceral reaction. It's the concept to the of ramens coming out of your nose. Yes. Well, and Zach, haven't you ever voice, been eating the ramen? And then, you, and then you thought of something really funny, and then noodles came out of your nose. No. Then, no. That's never happened to me. And, you or know, rather, that... haven't, you been, haven't you ever been eating dough and laughed so hard that noodles came out of your nose? I guess. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. Uh, which or, And cooked somehow. Um, yeah. My, I would say... The the thing I hate most about Wanze is his voice, and he has the same voice as Hattori and Sotori and and Beppo. No, not Hattori. Sotori and Sotori and whatever the fuck. Hotori. Yeah, Hotori. Beppo. I do love, except for his voice. Which and Mister Nine. He also has Mister Nine's voice. I have no opinion on Mister Nine, voices. except for Mike Cinder Nicholas's Mister Nine. Um, what's that? Oh, from Four Kids. All right. Uh, and Hopkins Hat comes in saying, "Hey, OPP, how it be." We're not answering that, but uh, they continue. Someone asked that already. Yes. I, I've been reading a lot of Full Metal Alchemist and realized it was a monthly series and each chapter about 45-ish pages with four chapters a volume. F may covers a lot of ground in just a single chapter. What's one part of One Piece that would have benefited from a monthly schedule like FMA? It can be any scene, arc, conversation, you name it. Mm. Ooh. Well, I mean, Oda leans so tough. far into that weekly format. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's think about it. Though. Do we get, like, how many months of the year do we get more than 45 pages of One Piece? I th- yeah, that's a good point, too. I mean, as I, of these days. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, these so, that's days, what I'm saying. Yeah. I, think, I think monthly would probably have benefited, say, um, uh, the Summit War would probably have really benefited from that. Because, you know, mm. that's like a lot of... Yeah. that would. That was a lot shorter chapters, more lush art spreads. Probably <laughs> Oda wouldn't have killed himself so much mm. on that if it was monthly. So I'm going to have to say, uh, I mean, yeah, Oda did need to take a break after that. But yeah. I will say that I think that the Summit War arc is paced very well for what it is. And every week we were just given gorgeous, gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous fucking art. I'm going to say that a post time skip. Uh, like really, everything could have benefited from that. Wano um, yeah. would be would be my answer. I think mm. just because or dress Rosa for guys. or, yeah. or Fishman Island, Fishman Fish Island, Island would, would really be a good one too. From some like editing, just I think editing. any I think any arc where they have to cover the same ground repeatedly, um, mm. like yeah. explaining a lot. Um, I, I think mean, this chapter is a really great example. Like yeah. an entire double page spread was sort of spent. Uh, you know, telling us where the crew has been since the flashback, but we've also gotten a lot more, we've gotten more exposition since then, because, you know, he's juggling a lot, and I think that, like, the reason I say uh, Fishman Island is a good one, but the reason I say Dressrosa is did he need to change, did he need to change the the freaking 
ar- architecture of the island? Did he need to change the topography? Like it just it made the arc so much longer. And then the bird cage is, happened. I like I'm noticing it more and more. People who marathon Dressrosa love it, and people who like us who read it week to week loathe it. Um, for the thing those is, yeah, I, I marathoned it and I had a great time. Yes, yeah, I've tried. Re- I've read it. Like I've. I've read it since I think week the first to week, time, it and I fucking the... can't do it. I'm yeah. sorry. It's so ah, uh, it's. I haven't reread Wano, but I had a really great time uh, yeah. reading Wano. I think it's because it was just kind of different. I I would miss the uh, cliffhangers, like the weekly cliffhangers. Mm. Uh, if what it didn't have it. that that thing to to drop like a quote, because he really he's so good at those. It. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I can't think about how much longer we would have to try to avoid spoilers. Like, oh, it's bad enough a few yeah, days a week be not being able to look well, on I mean, that, I guess that just depends on when the magazine goes to the yeah. printing press or yeah, whenever it gets yeah. sent to a. Uh, yeah, overseas. it might actually be the same. You know. mm. It would be. I, I remember when FMA spoilers came out. This this ages me, right? Like, <laughs> when, when FMA was week to week. Uh, or, I'm sorry, month to month. Uh, yeah, I think that, like, t- Stephen, you, you make a good point because I think Oda even said at one point that, like, I, part of the reason that he does you know, one piece is because it's, you know, the cliff people reading yeah. the cliffhangers or it's whatever. It's never going to happen. Train. I think it's Greg mentioned part, that. Yeah. It might've been Greg then. Yeah. It, it was, it's part of a, it's part of the culture reading jump on a train, mm-hmm. you know, and then going about your day. But like the cliffhangers are, yeah, it's a good, good point. Not in a Lowe's yeah. parking lot. That's not where people read jump. Well, was this a Lowe's parking lot chapter? Did this you, was, you? I was reading it while, we were in the car after Noah fell asleep after yelling about something with a truck. I don't know. Um, what's the next question? Next question is Sailor. If you Conrad must know how a... I read. Oh, no, it was a bagel place parking lot chapter. That's where I read it. You guys wow. don't read One Piece the second you wake up on a Sunday? I, I do. I've been, been awake yeah. for several hours at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's 10. Jesus. I'm awake from 5 a.m. on, so yeah. then no. Oh, okay. Early yeah, bird. yeah, that makes not, sense. Not because I want to be. I want to make that extremely clear. <laughs> um, Alex, what's the next question? Uh, this is from Sailor Karna is Universal. Who writes, sup, OPP? Did you guys see that the One Piece, that One Piece has made it to the Crunchyroll Awards? Still not enough considering. Uh, how do you all feel about it? Did it get? I know it was what? nominated. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Maybe it's not best manga or it's the or anime. It's not up for the Oscars. Like it's, it's, it's technically yes, it's not the Oscars. Awards. <laughs> yeah. Good for them. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Wano was hype. Were... People were really excited about that part in the year. Maybe, yeah. Maybe we should change this question to how? What would Luffy? Who would Luffy thank in his acceptance speech? Um, whoever Sorry, gave him food asking. last. Whoever gave him food in the green room, like, yeah. I want to thank everybody in the green room for providing me with such great sandwiches and snacks. Thank that's you. That's it. Night. Goodbye. That was... What about yeah. your family and your friends? And <laughs> that's it. That's that's what he is there. He's yeah. Homer Simpson. Uh, what's next? Uh, this next one comes to us from Please Step on Me Perona. Wow. <laughs> uh, she floats, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Chill, Chill has a very good point. <laughs> How come a lot of female fans like Ace, Sanji, Trafalgar, Lar, and Sabo? What's wrong with them? What do they see in those weenies? How come they're not into real men like Frankie, Senior Pink, Whitebeard, Katakuri, and Oden? You could be into all of those men. <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah. exclusionary. Yeah. You could be Sounds into like whatever you, you want to be. Almost everyone right. in one piece is my favorite thing. My favorite thing about that, that last bit, that last section... Uh, one of these things is definitely not like the other, yeah. and that could definitely go towards Whitebeard, who's old as fuck, uh, <laughs> Oden, who is dead as fuck, <laughs> or Senior Pink, who uh, is an adult baby. So uh, Ace is also dead. I think oh, yes, yeah, Ace is also I, dead. I, oh, there's a whole thing. So. There is a there's hole. A hole. That's true. There's there's a little. There's one more. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty I, warm. I, I just I just want to want to take a step back to to really appreciate how you just like power scale checked the <laughs> canonicity of that horny username please step Bravo. on me throat. that's not possible that's i'm sorry yeah, <laughs> yeah coming from um, username. actually like that's not, so not only yeah not only is Perona, uh not only uh, did she cast float on herself but she also cast uh invisible on herself so 
I think that... Uh, yeah, you could actually yeah. say that happens all the time to you. Uh, so you're fine. I'll, I'll yeah. say these are, I think, all hard-boiled, quote-unquote, characters, is I'm assuming the, the threat. They are, yes. Those are, those are hard-boiled characters, for yeah. sure. Katakuri uh, is um, 16 feet tall. Yeah, I wouldn't... <laughs> I wouldn't. So, yeah, say you that don't Katakuri want him to is... step, yeah, anywhere near you. I'm not sure if Katakuri is considered a hard-boiled character. When, like, I don't think I would put him in that. How do you uh, cook mochi? Echelon. How do I cook it? Yeah, is it boiled or? I actually don't know the answer to that. Uh, yeah. powder, right, you have know. to boil the rice. Yeah. It comes into a you have to bang it. Right? I know, no, <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. to make the mochi. That's not to. Ka- I mean, you can Katakuri's... grill it. It's an Odin, isn't it? Yeah. You could Katakuri's stew it. Katakuri is like the the opposite. Of the adult baby guy, because he's, yeah, like, he he's like, he's like, he seems super hardcore visually, he, he, but mm-hmm. then, then but he's, he, a softie. he's just yeah. not, he's yeah. just a super soft little boy. He's a super, yeah. he's just a, he's just a little sweetheart. Yeah, I yeah. love Katakuri. I don't love Senor Pink. Those are my opinions. Let's move on. Wow, what All a right. hot take. All right, moving on. Moving on it might to... be to some people. Okay. <laughs> I mean, on. at One Piece, everybody's got everybody's, everybody's got someone. someone's face. Look, you could like someone, just not Wanze. Um, <laughs> Al- no, I Alex... agree. I agree. I agree with your your Wanze hate. I'm I'm getting on on board this train right now. Thank I'm you. a Wanze hater too. That, Jeff, I've converted Jeff. <laughs> Great. Uh, All right, Alex. Uh, merely, we roll along to King Doji, who says, "Hi, OPP. Seems like Egghead is in danger." Luckily for us, Vegapunk has already pulled the old switcheroo and replaced Punk Records with Pank Records. Do you think that's where Vegapunk keeps his pancake recipes? Anyway, what TV show does each straw hat put on for background noise while doing chores? Uh, we're going to um, answer so, that in a second. So, so I, I, I can't. By the way, I can't believe I didn't make a way worse place. I can't believe I didn't make a. So uh, I didn't make. I didn't make a breadcrumbs joke earlier. Oh yeah, yeah panko, uh, panko records. Oh, panko yes. records. Ah, yeah. mm. that's a good one too. But, but we all we all just went to the dirty place. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's so what you expect here at the One Piece podcast. So, yeah, what Alex. TV show does each straw hat put on for background noise while doing Ooh. chores? That's the question. Mm-hmm. Sandy has like Cutthroat Kitchen or something. Nami so is pr- Nami is definitely Price is Right in the background, <laughs> or a Dragon's Den. I think. Yeah, I think Nami yeah. would be real big. Which here is no, <laughs> which in America is known as Shark Tank. Shark Tank. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, oh, Dragon. Right, right. You, you guys have the no. Dragon's American Den is a copy. better. Dragon's Den is a much better name. And I, uh, anyway, although, although you guys do have... Like, most the, of them are Canadian, right? The, no, the sharks? one of the sharks is Kevin from is. Dragon's Den. Yeah, Ke- the worst one. Yeah, the worst <laughs> one. He's, he's doing a he lot is. of infomercials these days, so he's, he's having fun. Um, which one, um, uh, which of the Straw Hats doesn't own a TV? Um, uh, Robin. Robin. It's she only reads books. Or yeah, audio yeah, books. She'll listen to an audio She's not ready for... Her yeah, favorite, her favorite show yeah. is books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, she'd be listening to an audio book. Um, think, Chopper's I think, a Zoomer, so it doesn't have live TV. It would just yeah, ch- no, Chopper would just have Baby Shark on TikTok. Oh Chopper's got Bluey. Oh, oh no, saw, Chopper yeah. is definitely <laughs> TikTok, yeah. We gotta yeah, yeah, yeah. Chopper away from TikTok. <laughs> yeah, get Chopper away. Yeah, Chopper might be Bluey. Oh, no, Chopper did the Tide Pod Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> no, is no, Chopper is Daniel ball. Tiger, which is an awful show, but I mean very educational. But that's that's I mean, it's, not, it's no Caillou. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, well. Okay, what would Frankie watch? Frankie would watch something really weird. Probably MythBusters. Remember that shit? Ooh. Yeah, Myth- yeah, yeah. Or know how it's made? Yeah. He would how watch it's it with Usopp, I think. Or or or, yeah, or anything how... uh, anything that was on uh, on Tech TV, like Call for yeah. Help or uh... BattleBots. Ooh, uh, battle bots. He would battle love battle bots. bots. Or junkyard Wars. Um, junkyard Wars yeah. would be good. Yeah. Uh, so Zoro so, Zoro would never get anything done because he'd spend the whole time trying to find the channel and looking away from the TV every time he passes it. Gets lost in the TV guide. <laughs> What's the Where show that? I? Uh, How did I get to channel eight hundred and six? What is this music? <laughs> What's um, the show that teaches yet? Or the the guys that make swords, mana, oh, oh, of arms. Oh, Forged yeah. That's a cool show. Or something. Yeah. Forged and yeah. fire. Fortune yeah. Fire, I think, is what it's so, called. So, Sanji, on Netflix, right? uh, I want to say, because I've been putting this on while working, uh, uh, Sanji would uh, watch the old Iron Chef reruns. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. let me tell you, uh, when you have Iron Chef on in the background while working, 
Uh, you hear that shit in your sleep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Focus on. Go. That's a good one. Uh, the challenger is using snow peas. Uh, snow peas, uh, pork, and, and red bean ice cream. Oh, wow. What uh, a great red bean ice cream, impression huh? of those guys. Wow, oh I can't believe they're using red beans. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, red beans. Wow. I've never had a red bean before. Like it's, it's I can't very cut this like off because that's amazing. <laughs> that was so well done. Like they like what a and they have the guy impression. And they've got like the guys like there's one guy that sounds like one of my old neighbors. There's this one guy who <laughs> kind of always sounds like this. And and it's it's ah oh, goddamn. And the fortune teller. Oh, there's always the fortune teller woman. Yeah, yeah. who's I, who I always say, just has it out for the challenger. Having recently seen sensei. the bear. Uh, it did remind me of the little bit of cooking they did in the live action One Piece with Sanji in the mm. kind of atmosphere they were going for. Um, so, oh, yeah. not a background uh, I, show, but a foreground. Oh yeah, and the guy. Show. By the way, the guy who plays uh, 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 Fukui San is like he's. He always says, "This battle's over," and man alive, it's very funny. Like it's ah, oh, goddamn. This so is how the piece good. together takes forty five minutes. <laughs> uh, well, sorry, I mean this hey, is really. So who do we still have to get? We got to get Brooke. Uh, Look, this is the first um, time I've really been jazzed, really jazzed on piece. This together is a very a good really question. Time, this so. is a very good question. <laughs> it is a really good question. We got Brooke, Jinbei, and Who's Luffy, up? and Luffy, Luffy, we we do Luffy. Luffy. Luffy, Luffy cartoons of some sort, but like kids. Car- oh, Looney Tunes. Luffy would what be watching Looney Dragon Tunes. Ball. Luffy would be watching. Dragon Ball. <laughs> Luffy doesn't put TV on in the background. Like, That's he true. He puts it on the yeah. foreground. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. He, yeah, he, he doesn't multitask. He would have, yeah, um, he would have been told to do something, and then just yeah. accidentally he's watching. He would have just ended up watching. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, okay. So I think that DBZ is too mature for for Luffy. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I think ahead. Jinbei would put on the news and shake yes. his head at it constantly. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, and NPR, he would probably listen to. Yeah, yeah, he'd, he'd be listening to NPR on the radio and like, oh, yeah. what an idiot. <laughs> yeah. just, you know, just like, <laughs> yeah, like. Chopper, like, can you believe this shit? Yeah, yeah. This, it, is, can, can you... this is NPR from Fishman Island. Or <laughs> um, news... Neptunian Public Radio. Yeah. Neptunian that... <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I'll write it um, down, even though we picked a title. Um, yeah, that's that's really good. It um, needs to be saved. Okay. Uh, uh, Usopp. We still have a couple big ones here, by the way. Mythbusters, so. I think, also works for him. Uh, I, anyone else we could need to get out of the way here? I, I think... No, I think Usopp I think that was everyone, watch, right? like... I think we saw no Brooke. We haven't done Brooke. We watch musicals or something. Brooke would, no, Brooke old, would watch like old, old shows old, from the yeah. Probably 40s. like just he watched the Grand Old Opry. Silent movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put on <laughs> put on TCM. Just let oh, that. Yeah. that that's yeah. Stooges. Like, you know. um, oh, oh yeah, that's what he yeah, would yeah. like. Yes, yes, Three yes. Stooges. Yeah. That's Brooke. That's that's yeah, the Brooke Stooges, one. Abbott and Costello, all that classic slapstick stuff. I'm sorry, Alex. This was a very good question that needed to be addressed. Okay, and. Yeah, I, so Usopp, Usopp. I don't think myth Mythbusters. I think something like, not scary. It has to be wholesome, but yeah, it, no, he's, he's doing he's doing how it's made. Or yeah, you know Mr. what that Rogers. is, mm. or yeah. something about like boats, uh, or, or like or, one of those shark shows, like one of the no, fishing. I, I think he'd put on like like some kind of crazy adventure show to get like uh, ideas. Yeah. One Piece, you know. He's yeah, the he, he watch One Piece. I, I think Usopp hold on, would I think be we're a missing... One Piece fan to be. He fair. would no, be. But, yeah. We're missing the point though of of what the actual question is. It's not what TV show. Oh, do you're they right. Watch. You're it's right. What TV show do they put on the background while doing chores? Like that's the. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. not something that they necessarily want to pay attention to. Yeah. So the easy answer for Usopp <laughs> is Family Guy. Actually, the easy answer oh. for the entire Straw Hat crew is putting on Family Guy. No, I don't uh, like that. In the background. Like that. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> I'll agree on that. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We still got to do Carew. <laughs> nope, okay. no. Vivi. nope. No, we don't. No, nope, no, we don't. Uh, Vivi doesn't have a television BBC. either. She's BBC. She's a rich bitch. We're um, we're, we're moving on. Yeah. Uh, like BBC News. She has go ahead. Uh, Wisdom Pythagoras, who was not dead, who did not die, uh, says, uh, "Hey, OPP, we've seen this movie before. Forbidden research, genocidal government, evacuated ship. Sounds like Doctor Vegapunk or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Buster Call. That's the first <laughs> good. Do- that's the first good Doctor Strange love I've heard in a while because yeah, that's, that's a good one. One. way too much. <laughs> Jokes aside, with how we're still getting new players entering the mix, how much longer do you think we have in this arc? Is anyone still in the running for those arc and predictions? Jeez, oh, I need to find that. Um, All right, well, I well, don't that, think so. That, 
in that case, you're going to be playing the part of Ota, uh, and I will be Fukui-san, uh, Zach. Thank so you. if... Because you're going to go to the I challengers, ask them, right. yeah. So so for, for predictions, like, if the Straw Hat Grand Fleet is coming, we know That'll they've got add some... A lot. Yeah, we know they're going to Elbaf at some point pretty soon. And there, there's giants in the Grand Fleet, right? Like, at least a couple of them. Hyridin, uh, yeah. Yes, and yes, uh, yes, yeah. the rest of the new Wow, we've, we've, been in, we've been in Egghead for a while. This book... Too long. This book started at the beginning of Egghead, I think. Jesus, I'm almost done with it. Um, oh, I gotta wow. find it, so we could get back to that. Well, I mean, well, it's, so, it's, so, it's... You know, they, they gotta stay in Egghead for a while, because Egghead has... The best opening One Piece has ever had. They God gotta damn milk it, that. yes. <laughs> yeah, they do. That's going to be their... Oh, here, I found it. I found it. Um, right. So, by the way, we're up to 11.05 this week. Ed, mm-hmm. this is the chapter you guessed it will end. Um, oh everyone else has lost. Um, <laughs> everyone. Does that, mean, does that mean we do new predictions? Do we do, like, a new round? We probably should. Um, yeah, let's do a new round, and Jeff could take part in it. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of these people on anyway. Um, Jeff, I hope I hope that you realize that if you win, you get to host the One Piece podcast. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that is the prize. Jill, you did right? Did we ever? Oh, uh, once, you do yeah, that? that was fun. Yeah. Who so did I, Wano I, I was get to host Steven, an episode. Right? <laughs> Joey got to yeah. host once after oh. after Egghead ends. So sometime in yeah. 2056. But um, yeah, Jeff, what's your prediction? It's Price is Right rules, by the way. So it's closest without going over, as Nami would hmm. listen to while doing chores. Let's see. So, when did the arc start? What's the chapter it started at? Ten. Uh, I probably have it here. Ten. Sorry. Seventy. Seventy-ish? Ten seventy. Okay. So, we've been going for... Around there. Yeah, 35 chapters. Um, I think... <sighs> Eleven twenty. Okay. Uh, be here before you know it. That's by the end of the year, I think, probably. Uh, Alex, do you have one? Let's see. We are at... Your previous one was 1085, by the way, which was before the Kuma flashback by a, a large margin. I think it was actually even before <sighs> the Around the World stuff, or it was around So that. I just want to say that this arc kind of threw us all for a loop in the yeah, predictions department simply because we had all the bullshit with Kid and Law. And, and also because they said early in the arc, Kobe. we have to leave mm-hmm. now. And then they yeah. never left. Or they've been trying to leave. And all that like, other stuff I th- happened. I think yeah. our predictions would have been more on if we had just stayed on Egghead during this arc. So yeah, um, maybe. We're at, maybe. We're at 11.03? 5. 11.05, which was 11.05. Ed's prediction. If it ends next chapter... Uh, or if, I'm sorry. If it, I get. I don't think I can win, can he? Or without going. No, no. I, I, I will. I will have gone over right. at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Technically, yeah. so he's won. Yeah, because I was going to so... say Ed won technically, but we're not <laughs> going to count that. Ed hosts all the time. Uh... <laughs> I, I think that. Uh, I think we have about ten more chapters left in us. So eleven fifteen. Wait, hold on. Let's see here. Eleven fifteen. Let me no. No, no, no. I think that's still too many. Because that's about another volume. Jeff, by the way, if you have to go at any time, you can. Uh, you just no, throw the... Right. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> I'm going I'm to predict that we have... Alex. I'm going to yeah. predict that we have... Seven People... chapters left. Oh, uh, wow. 12. That's soon. 11-12? That's yeah. your answer? Okay, 11-12. Yeah. Steven? 11-12. 12. Uh, 11, 14 Eleven fourteen. Uh, you're you're doing the one dollar over for. Uh, but if we have another flashback, I'm gonna fucking shit. Like that's <laughs> like. I, I hope in the toilet. Um, Jill, you didn't you didn't have one before, so you're fine. You're you're Scott clean. But what do you want for this one? I think this is gonna be longer than people think. Eleven twenty five. Oof. Uh, I think if we were gonna Ed? escape the island soon, we've done it already. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll go eleven twenty two. Wow, everyone's so close together. You know what? 11.50. I don't want to host this thing. Uh, no, so I, you, you, I legitimately good. think that's possible. Yeah. Um, 
I, I'm 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 like reaching a bit, but like I feel like the eleven twenties is a little too soon. Um Shit. like in all honesty, eleven thirties or forties, uh. I think. We're done. They're they're locked in. We're not doing okay. this. Well, Se- I was gonna, Seventeen I was gonna... chapters is like half a year from now. I and understand. That's, that's what I, that's what I, I, I don't think it's going to be eleven fifty. I'm doing that also because who wants to host this? But um, <laughs> and also I always do it. But I, I do think it will be sometime in twenty twenty five because I think once again Oda keeps thinking he's at the end, and that's not how it works. He finds out in the middle. Uh, we I think we have until at least uh, 2027 until this series ends. Uh, anyway, Alex, any more questions? Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have two more questions. Uh, On Sheepman. Sheepman says, howdy, OPP. Lots happening in this chapter. I wanted to give my props to Jinbei for picking up on the fact that Zora gets lost easily after finding out Wano <laughs> from the crew that Zora is the worst guy to go after Luffy when Luffy ran off. Glad to see he's learning the ins and outs of the crew's quirks. We needed Jim Bay earlier in this series. <laughs> he would have saved, yes, would have saved someone I, I, getting stuck in a chimney, I'll say that. I mean, I mean, if we, Jim Bay early would have, like, changed the entire trajectory of the series. It wouldn't it would have been a comedy be like series. Long. Yeah, it would have been, like, it, half as long, too. Just oh, like, Luffy's in the snake? Let me get him out of there. Um, he's, just, he's just dad. Yeah. A lot of the, the snake. Yeah. P- picking snake up Zoro, up, grabbing yeah, him, yeah. just... just I love Jinbei. Uh what's what's the next? Last, you mean Ron Last. Quixote D the third. I think that's how you pronounce this yeah, uh, handle. Me. Hey OPP. Vegapunk is an interesting position and he Vegapunk is in an interesting position to me. While Saturn and the world government are ultimately ultimately responsible for the atrocity taking place, Vegapunk, unlike Professor Clover, failed to warn the scientists of the danger his research would bring them, and thus Saturn, the prick he is, isn't completely wrong when it comes to Vegapunk being somewhat responsible. With how Vegapunk visited Ohara and saw the destruction but still decided to work with the government, is this a case where he doesn't get off this island? I know Sanji promised to keep Vegapunk safe, but I could see him deciding to sacrifice himself while the one or all of the remaining satellites live on to make things right. So my question is, which of the remaining Vegapunks are making it off the island, and will Stella be one of them? Hmm. I mean, Atlas is the one who gave Luffy food. So, yeah. I mean, that's who he'll yeah. be trying to save the most. How many of them are already yeah. dead? Most of them. Two? Oh, we, Two. So we've got Atlas, Edison... And Lilith uh, still alive. And right? Stella. And um, York. York. York is evil. York. And York. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to. I forgot agree. to mention. I forgot to mention York being around, and also Stussy, who did get hurt, but I think she's okay. Stussy, um, who did is, not die. Is it yeah. pronounced Stussy? Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's, I've been pronouncing yeah. it the inappropriate way in my brain. <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure ninety percent of the readership is doing that, at least. Um, God, we're just taking everything the wrong way this week. It's because I'm on. Uh, by the way, yeah, that's how it, is Bill. Stussy not the inappropriate way? Well, I, you know, I, I'm not going to explain this to you. You're, 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 you're so fan innocent. Fiction. It's that's sweet. Never mind. <laughs> after uh, after your whole I, discussion on on spank records, um, no, 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 I just got it. <laughs> I will say, by the <laughs> way, uh, yeah, <laughs> is that it for this piece? Uh, I'm going to say I don't think any more Vegapunks are dying, and that is the end of this piece. I Over. like it. I, I'm going right. to say also Egghead started in the ten, around 1060, apparently. I was wrong. Um, oh, okay. So it's already a pretty long arc. I need to – I have a spreadsheet about this and how long it's going to be. I'll, I'll check later. But in the meanwhile, Stephen, where are we going? You're going to the subreddit archipelago at r slash one piece podcast. Uh, we have just a couple questions here. Uh, but they're pretty good. Quick password says, "Hey crew, great chapter. I was wondering, what characters do you think will have a really good 2024?" Um, I don't know about you guys, but like right now, I think Saturn stocks are high. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. Wait, wait. What was the question? <laughs> what characters do you think will have a really good 2024? Oh. I, I think Saturn's mm. gonna die. Um, personally, <laughs> probably Blackbeard because I can't see him getting attacked in a year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Blackbeard's probably good. If you're holding Kuma stock, sell now. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that there's a time is limited. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. financial market for this. Um, yeah, 
No, I, I feel I feel like I feel like Kuma's stock is only going to go up even if he dies. You know, like like people who invested in Ace back in the day, they're still reaping. That's dividends. true. Yeah, they're That's still true. eating. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, like, <laughs> people. Like, I love the idea of people living off of these things. Big news, Morgan's. <laughs> I'm sure he's getting a lot of good news. Big news. Yeah, big news, Morgan. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. I I think I think Vivi stocks. I think Vivi stocks are where are going to be where it's at. I think that that whole connection with the Revolutionary Army is going to really bring her back into the narrative. Although that might be next year, to be fair. With, Dar- with Wapol, your dark horse here. Wapol, <laughs> that's mm. true. Wapol was in the OP. Wapol was, was Des- in... No, but Big News Morgan's uh, thing was covering him. Uh, but that, that just makes me think he's more important. <laughs> <laughs> he's being hidden. Good answer. Yeah, exactly. What does they want us to know Mike about Mike Wazowski. Waffle? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> He's, there's a conspiracy theory on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, all right, Avatar Calamity says, was I the only one thinking of the Dharma Initiative palette food drop out of nowhere when Luffy suddenly had all that food a few chapters oh, ago? Wow. Perhaps Egghead has a secret Dharma station. Uh, what would it be called? That's the question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Egghead, I guess. Yeah, Egghead yeah. station, yeah. Uh, speaking of Lost, are there any One Piece mysteries you would rather not be answered by the end of the series? I find that the vague explanations to mysteries in Lost continue discussions of the show over a decade after it ended. What sorts of One Piece mysteries do you think should foster conversations long after the manga ends? None of them. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know everything? Answers for everything. Give it, give it all, yeah. But- I mean, everything that's been, like, brought up. Like, I don't, like, if when it comes to shit like, you know... Uh, Shit, I was gonna say, why does Sanji's eyebrow curl like that? Uh, but I think mm. we're probably we're probably gonna get an answer. Soon. I think yeah. like yeah. some of the supernatural stuff, like the Klebotterman, I don't really need more of like an explanation. Yeah. You could just you don't yeah, have to yeah, be yeah. like, oh, think, this is actually a scientific blah blah yeah. blah. Yeah, I, I, I I'm okay with the uh, with the mystery shapes in, in the the uh, Florian Triangle. I'm, I'm okay not. That's just being no. Like, that one disturbs me. I'm actually, so yeah, pissed yeah, about give me that, that one. Yeah. I'm mad about it too. Devil what fruits we're gonna they could, get. They could, I think they could be humans. They, they could be yeah, fine. Yeah, devil fruit. I'm yeah. trying to think of any mysteries that plausibly wouldn't be explained. I think the ancient been... weapons could totally be explained. I think we are heading toward. To I think oh, yeah. we are. No, they have to be. They're, they're like I say that, essential. Yeah, I say this excitedly. I think we are headed toward more of an explanation of the void century. Um, I think we're closer than ever before to that and like close enough that I feel like I could touch it. Just like when Clover yeah. was about to say the name. Well, the world <laughs> government keeps, is very focused on it. They bring it up. Like it came, it came up in this chapter. Saturn, you but, know, by the way, uh, did my, it. did, did my, uh, arc chapter, uh, Egghead is in its 47th chapter, depending on how you, you know, do it. One chapter more so far than Thriller Bark, believe it or not. Wow. 48. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, it's the the one we were talking about, the goat. Mm-hmm. Uh, huh. Yeah. All That's right. Nice. Uh, wow. Our last comment on Reddit is from Twenty Three Years Virgin, who says, "Hey, OPP, congratulations for reaching episode eight hundred and three. Let's hope for another eight hundred and three episodes, since few programs reach that number." Made me think of a question: What would you like? What would you have liked to enjoy 803 of? For me, I would enjoy 803 hot dogs with different sauces. Cheers and keep up the good work. This is a Mitch Hedberg a bit. Uh, it's rice. The answer is rice. 803 yeah. of something. Yeah. <laughs> 800. Yeah. It's a small bowl of 803 rice. hot dogs would um, you <laughs> die. You would um, die. By the way, Egghead is one chapter less than Thriller Burke, but I think we're going to get there. Um, I'm just. I'm, I'm just. Thinking of that comedy sketch where it's like, how many hot dogs have you had today? I had nothing. I just had a hot dog bowl. It's like a... <laughs> <laughs> um, you could also say couscous. Um, oh, yeah. Even things. smaller. Yeah. Couscous yeah. is good. Quinoa, um, which I'm not as big mm. a fan of. I, I, I could do 803 potato chips. Ooh. I could do 803 tortilla chips. Mm. That's, that's, that's uh, I would my, I would nuts. shrivel up like Luffy... In gear five, at the end of gear five, but boy, I enjoy it. I hate eating 803 oh, column yeah. on olives. I was going to say, then, you know, your die of up. dehydration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, grapes. Grapes would be grapes. really grapes good. Grapes are a good mm-hmm. one. Yeah. I feel You'd like be on the toilet for a while lot. after 803. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, popcorn, I guess. 
Yeah, popcorn's a good. Popcorn. The salt ke- ones. kettle corn. Sorry, kettle corn specifically. That well, like how many? Is good. How many like kernels of of popcorn are in a bag? Like I don't know the answer to that, but probably at least a hundred, right? So that's only like eight bags. You could do that if you want. It wouldn't be fun, but you could do it. Eight uh, bags. You could try. I beg to differ. It wouldn't be. fun. You know what? I'm gonna change my answer. Nerds. Oh yeah, 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 like that is, I that is easy, 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 yeah, yep. yep. <laughs> I would, I think I'd rather yep. have salt in large quantities than sugar, because like, I feel like sugar would make me feel ill after a while, I don't know if that would be, oh, well, either one will kill you eventually, yeah, that's not great, uh, oh, no, no, I'm, don't worry about that, I'll, I'll take care of that, except rice, rice probably won't, um, <laughs> In eight hundred three of them, uh, is there are there any other questions that that turned into a weird tangent? Not on Reddit. Okay, Ed, it's time for our final piece together segment. It's called "Piece the Tweets." Yeah, the, yeah, the, the former time. former Twitter questions, <laughs> current Twitter. Ed, what do we got? Sorry about that. Uh, let's see here. First one comes from. Pikmin Man, who says, question for Jeff, is it safe to assume that we'll be getting a what's in an OP for the new openings? I'd like to. I mean, the the, the last couple what's in an OP and and um, uh, uh, Animele videos that I've done have been like copyright mm. minefields mm. and yeah. also just what's in an OP doesn't... But maybe on the second channel I'd like to. It's a really good opening. It's like... Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Easily, you could, easily the best One Piece. Opening. I like wonder. Can I you wouldn't do, like, say a easily show? the best because we are exist. Kokoro and Ichizu exist. I mean, so, song wise, we are clears. Yes, I think, yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. But but like visually, visually sure. Oh yeah, yeah. visually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's, visually, it's visually, it's no contest. And it's it mm-hmm. like came out of nowhere. Like who would have expected like that? It's if you just watch I, openings in a row and be like, what the hell is this one? Wow. Um, yeah. I I think. You could do a slideshow though, right? Like, well, I okay. I'm, copyright law stuff on um on YouTube, I know is a, it's its own beast, so I won't even. Yeah, like I I'd like to. I would really like to. Um, it's just a matter of like figuring out how to make it make sense as a video project because we're we we've got some stuff going on. Back I can end. imagine. So yeah. yeah, we're we're uh, I can't produce as many videos as I'd like to right now, but for good reasons. I'll just say that. Okay, good reasons are good. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what's next, Dad? Next one comes from KKRP, who says at the end of the chapter we cut away to destroyed navy ships with an ominous message that they went to Egghead. Could Oda finally be bringing back the mysterious Blackbeard pirate ship? We saw approaching Egghead in chapter 1079 and hasn't brought up since all in caps at last part. Uh, I think, I mean, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a possibility. We talked about it during the uh, manga recap. You, you know, I'm going back to Bon Clay now because do they go by they, them? Uh, yeah, I was going to make that joke too. <laughs> I, hey. I don't know how I'm we glad had the Navy it respects at this point. The pronouns. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say yeah. they, and I really mean they, this one. Yeah, they non-binary. slash they them are, are coming. Yeah. <laughs> we, need to warn, we, need, we need to oh, warn. We need to warn. That's a good Saint title Saturn too. Saturn, so that he doesn't misgender them. Yeah, yeah because arrive. Saint Saturn, we know, loves murdering people and thinks of uh, everyone as very, very, very passionate respect. about yeah. much about like Kaido respects pronouns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're just that's one. the one thing about One yeah. Piece villains. <laughs> they respect yeah. pronouns. Yes, they respect they, they pronouns, but want to kill everybody. Sadly, fandom does not. Since, yeah, since Croc, well, since since Croc, since Croc, that's true. I do like the idea that this is a world where you could do anything, but you cannot misgender someone, no matter who you are. Well, that's Crocodile is very, it's very you know near and dear to him because he's used to be Luffy's mom. So yes. you know, that's true. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. He called himself yeah. Sir Crocodile for a reason. You can't misgender him. Yeah, that's true, sir. <laughs> uh, sir, um, God, I hope that happens. I, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> That'd be such a good For so twist. many reasons. I mean, it's like, it's so, the seeds are so planted there, totally could do it, and it would make complete sense. Um, anyway, what's what's next, Ed? All right, two more questions. First one comes from Gabe Ruiz, who says, OPP, if you're on Egghead about to be Buster Call, the only escape is the Brook Thousand Sunny Ice Slide of Death Ride. 
you buying a ticket, even though there's a high chance of falling to your death as well. It, it, I hop on that. It looks fun. I'm on that ride every time, 100 percent of the time. Every <laughs> it's, well, it's negative like 30 fun. there, so I think yeah. you're just or it was. So yeah. isn't that just driving at that point? Yeah, that is just driving in Edmonton. Yeah. I, I th- that seems During it's the, like the water slide at the end of the Goonies. It's the only way out. Or like you do the penguin slide, then you know, like on your stomach. Brooke forgot to put the chains on before. Sending <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that would ruin the that would ruin the whole uh, road, you know. Like you know, I'm really, I'm really, the... I'm really mad that we don't come up, uh, that we don't wait until after piece the tweet to do titles because uh, yeah, Thousand Sunny Snow Tires uh, <laughs> is is a real banger. I that have actually a decent chunk of titles that I've written well, down. No, cool, but they cool, would cool. come out of the uh, the Soldier Doc system. You know, the yeah, wheels they, the, with, the, with the snow tires. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm sure Frankie could honestly just make that in an instant. Oh, just yeah. get some chain. Yeah. yeah He's I got mean, the paddle. Sure right. I don't think it's even out of the question it'll appear in the series. That's true. We you might know, see the tire chains. You know, one one time a friend of mine, he typed, he, he wrote this on a piece of paper to me, and I'm going to type it in the chat, but I will also say it phonetically. And uh, no he cares. said that this is how this is how you say snow tires, but in a Baltimore accent. Snay tours? Yeah. <laughs> That sounds Snake right. Tours. Snake yeah. Snake <laughs> that sounds like a reptor, you know, Snake villain or, so, yeah. or like okay. something in Rugrats. Okay, um, no. that's good. Yeah, let's get those snake tight tours right. on here. Um, <laughs> snow tours. That's <laughs> yeah. Well, now you're getting like southern. It sounds almost. Anyway, yeah. Ed, we have one more, right? Yes, sir. There's one more yeah, um, this. from Victor Wormgard, who says, given Kizaru's recent development, could he possibly join up with Luffy? This would be interesting given that Kuzan is now with Blackbeard, and it would also give Akainu a stroke, which would be very <laughs> funny. <laughs> which would be anything that either. causes Sakazuki no. stress is good. Yeah. So, yeah, it's that means Akainu will talk vein. like this for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but yeah, it's a Paul Wayne or the. Would you like to see no, no, Frank, Frank Nelson. Frank Nelson. Frank Nelson, Nelson not, not, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's possible. Like, like Kizaru, he, he. One thing I noticed in this chapter is, like, he could have killed somebody in that capsule pretty easily, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah like, sure like they were, they were, but he sliced straight through between them. He's That trying. might be what we call luck in anime or manga for the sake that of the That could story. just be luck in yeah. anime, but yeah, yeah. Like, or bad know. aim. Or bad aim, but he hasn't, like, he could have killed a lot of people, and he hasn't killed anybody yet. So as there's, far as we there, know. Yeah. So, the, you know, there's, or on, in this, in this, scene I'll, I'll say when when they say and i'm 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 probably just being a stickler here when they say join luffy i i think as an ally not as obviously a crew member not that would not be a weird. crew member obviously yeah but and like, hello everyone i'm kizaru and i'm here to join the crew um <laughs> i don't know why that I, was my impression i could see it i, I could see your, it. Kizaru is, uh, your kizaru is a snaggle puss he's too tall for the <laughs> ship anyway <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> Oh, Heaven the Murgatroy! Heaven the Murgatroy! We can Mr. You know what? <laughs> That's the voice from now on for Keezer. Uh, <laughs> I've done We've it. Gone I've gone through so many. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We could. There's always. A, there's always room for more. That's it for Peace Together. Why don't we round off the show? Sure. <laughs> This has been the One Piece Podcast, episode 803 for January 29th, 2024. This was a really fun one. I really enjoyed this one. I did not, I figured 13 pages of content would yield at least an hour, and I was correct. Um, Next week, uh, we're going, we have a really cool group of folks coming on. We have the two uh, ADR directors for One Piece uh, for the Crunchyroll slash former Funimation dub. Uh, we have Emily Fajardo, which is the who is the current ADR director, and former ADR director Anthony Bowling will also be on. Uh, they were supposed to be on separate episodes, but due to Oda's breaks, uh, once again, for the second time, they will be on an episode simultaneously. I believe Mary Ann Bray will also be joining us. Let's see how huge that show is. Um, if there's no break, the following week we have Rogers Bass on and Henry Thurlow will probably be joining us on that episode february 12th 
Uh, Randy Troy is joining us on the 19th of February. Rustage on the 26th. And I already have a pretty good slate for March, but I'm not ready to announce that yet. Um, I'm trying to get like all the 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 hits for uh, for this year as much as possible because it's a big year for us. I don't know if you've heard. It's our 15th anniversary this year. Um, wow! Thank you, Bernie. Um, Alex, where could people find you? Find me on Twitter still at dude exclamation. Also, same on Blue Sky, which I haven't posted there in ages, but I'm there. Uh, Weeb Simpsons, that's still a thing. Uh, continue, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> uh, you can follow me uh, posting regularly on Blue Sky at Stephen Paul social um where i am uh doing a three chapter day read through of one piece that started at the uh, beginning of the year and so basically just whenever i feel like it whenever there's some random thing that catches my attention that i think is funny that i haven't necessarily commented on before i just snap a quick pick and uh, throw it up there so if you want to see just you know very very random very silly thoughts uh, about that um you can follow me there on blue sky uh, Jill. Uh, yeah, you can find me at Piratess Unluck on the site formerly known as Twitter. Uh, and um, you can also find me uh, alongside Sam uh, co-hosting uh, Reel It In, our podcast where we, um, you know, review live action adaptations of anime. New episodes soon. Soon. We, we were going to we were going to record last week. Things came up for both me and him. So we're hoping. Yeah. For I know, soon yeah. This month. I know things are chaotic. Um. Uh, Ed, I guess it's just us. Where can you find us? Uh, you are um, Zach at One Piece Podcast on Blue Sky. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm Zach Edward at e. One Piece Podcast dot com. If you yeah. right, go, anyway, go ahead. And I'm Edward E on Blue Sky. Uh, the podcast can be found at the new and improved One Piece Podcast dot com. Our email address is One Piece Podcast at gmail dot com. You can uh, subscribe on Patreon. Please support us there. You can subscribe to the podcast on SoundCloud, on Spotify, on iHeartRadio. And you can also subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or call us on our phone number, Zach. That phone number is 347-497-MAJI. MAJI. MAJI. That phone number number again, 347-497-6254. Call anytime. 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 With your your questions, comments, theories, or... uh, why if, or your thoughts on neptunian public radio uh I, I had a lot of choice there um i will say also speaking of the phone number we make fun of it a lot um tara uh tara sands who does uh our sister podcast that's that she does with steve called four kids flashback which please check out uh told me about this site called speakpipe.com which apparently you could actually take voicemails in an easy way um through the internet uh, instead of Skype, uh, which is, I guess, technically still the internet. Um, so I'm probably going to be setting one of those up this week. So keep an eye on our social media. Um, so hopefully we could get back to voicemails. I'm thinking in an off week uh, where there's not an SGS particularly, that might be a fun thing to do. Um, and don't be freaks about it, you guys. Come on now. Okay, it's our <laughs> audience. You know, take that either way. You could take that either way. Um, no, thank you. We love all you guys out there. Uh, please subscribe to us on Patreon if you haven't. Uh, we have lots of cool stuff, as we said, coming up in the next few weeks. Um, but I think that's going to do it. We'll see you next week for Chapter 1106. My name is Zach. My name is Ed. And my name is Alex. Thanks for Steve and Jeff for coming on. And thanks, Jill and Steven. We'll see you next week, everyone. Goodbye. 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 Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.